Hello and welcome to On The Esky on this beautiful Saturday afternoon for us boys. Uh, and On The Esky is an Australian podcast where we will go through all the local and then the international sports for the week and all the big stories. Um, a lot of interesting stuff has been happening, especially in the cricket world and then in the AFL world. Uh, so we're going to cover all of that and much, much more today. Uh, especially with a little bit of NRL, AFL news. There's some interesting boxing news going on after the Australian boxing card on yep. Wednesday night. A uh, little bit of soccer as well, and um, we will see what else comes our way. A little bit of NBA and F1. Yes, yes. Last race as well for the year, so we'll talk about that as well yep. when Pepe needs to go for his wee-wee break. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to get into the uh, F1 next year. I, it's something that you know, always sort of been there, and yeah. I just haven't invested the time. And you know, it's it's something yeah. else to follow and get excited about. So I need to need to do my homework. Yeah, yeah. Chain, of course, a bit of a change up in the lineup for today. Uh, Peppy, of course, is still back with myself, Sean. Yo, yo. But no Pappas, and the Jimmy the China Man is back. To do our stats and to run all the laptop stuff for us. <laughs> the best in the business. We did miss him last week. No offence to uh, Christopher Pappas. Uh, obviously, some good insights from our uh, lovely Greek stallion, the Pap. Uh, but good to have Jimmy the Chinaman back on board. He was down the south coast. A uh, little romantic getaway, I think, last week. <laughs> Has to be done. Yeah. It does. I'm not going to lie. Put in the the coast was pretty nice last week. So Yes. As yeah. long as it wasn't Northern Beaches. It wasn't Northern Beaches. No Northern so Beaches, yeah. No, <laughs> no COVID outbreaks for us here. Oh. Um, did listen to the podcast on the way home the next day and then you did all right. It was oh, good. Thank you. It was thank good. you. I uh, liked excellent, it. Excellent. <laughs> so I think we'll kick off with uh, the cricket and the Australia's first test against India. Uh, as we mentioned in last week's podcast, that that was started Thursday? Thursday, yep. It's so, broadcasting Saturday, so day three about to kick off Yeah, 45 uh, for minutes, us day here. three starts. Pink ball test, uh, the seventh uh, pink ball test uh, going back to 2014-15 season. Australia hasn't lost a pink ball test yet, um, which is a pretty incredible stat. Seven tests, uh, seven wins. Uh, although there's this guy called Coley, and he brings a really nice Indian side uh, to Adelaide, and he's actually uh, they India won the toss. They elected to bat, yep. uh, and I think his record when he wins the toss is twenty nine wins from thirty one uh, tosses won. Uh, so pretty incredible stat line there. Um, India bats first. They make two hundred and fifty. I thought, oh, here we go. They're going to get skittled pretty early with Mitch Stark uh, cleaning up Privacy Shaw's poles in uh, with just the second ball of the game. And then uh, the brick wall, Pujara comes out and makes a very slow 43, 160 balls face. That's mm-hmm. the way he bats, uh, sort of an old school test cricketer. Uh, just the last time they came out, he, he actually batted for 31 hours yeah, crazy. Through, through four tests. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I've batted 31 hours in the last five years. <laughs> Probably not even, actually. <laughs> um, and, yeah, he... He's just he's just an absolute rock. He, he faced twelve hundred and fifty eight balls last series, so to, to get him on forty three, uh, pretty pretty good job by the Aussies. Coley comes out, makes seventy four, and it was looking really nice. Mm. Uh, was scoring a little bit quicker than Pujara, still a little bit reserved, uh, probably by his standard. And then just the the thing that's brought me the most joy out of anything probably in the last few weeks, he gets absolutely barbecued by Rahane. <laughs> Rahane takes off for the quick single. He's hit it straight to mid-off. I think it was... He just doesn't really take off. He takes like two steps. He took two he, steps. He, he says, yes. Yes, Two yes. steps, and then he's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and Cole is just like, oh, you fucked me. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. Big time barbecue. It was uh, hit it to Mitch Stark there at mid-off and uh, just... Had to get it into Nathan Lyon's hands. He takes the bails and a massive, massive wicket uh, there for the Aussies because Coley, the way he was batting, looked like he was probably mm. going to go way out, well over a hunt, like go out and scored a really big ton. Uh, did, so did, take that little bit of luck. Yeah. Did you see that they could have had him? Probably, I think he was under twenty at the time. Where I was he, ask that. He, mm. yeah, he nicked it on his gloves, and mm-hmm. uh, Matthew Wade uh, was very keen to do the ch- chase and upstairs, but Tim Payne was like, oh, "I'm not so sure about it." Wade's probably st- was standing from, say, me to monks away from yeah. Collie, mm-hmm. which is about a metre and a half away, considering <laughs> where he was fielding. Uh, it's very unfortunate because 
it's strange for the wicket keeper to not want to review that. Yeah. They generally get a really good view and a really good feel for any deviation. Mm. Uh, so yeah, but where it was like where his hands were on the bat, it was just it kind of just grazed the underside of his fingers as mm-hmm. the ball was passing through. And they can be tr- tricky those ones that just feather the glove because yeah. unlike the edge, it doesn't make much of a sound. Yeah, well on uh, Snicker, yep. I think they showed it barely made a sound, mm. but you could see on hotspot there was definitely there. It hit the glass. Right. Yeah. So there and was, he would have known that. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes those real faint edges, you you really don't know. If something yeah. flicks your gloves, you know. Yeah. Yep. You definitely know. Uh, not saying that he should have walked. I think that um, no, umpire, no. umpires are there for a reason. You know, I've, I've never been a big fan of uh, people walking. Uh, shout out to guys like Gilly that you know used to do it back in the day. Uh, but my uh, my conscience doesn't burden. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you get fired, and you probably didn't deserve to be out. So yeah, that's my take on uh, walking. Uh, so India makes two fifty. Mm-hmm. Uh, we go. I oh, actually Mitchell Stark. Stark uh, he was the best. Yeah, the best of the bowlers. He uh, had four for fifty three. He actually he averages nineteen in pink ball cricket, uh, which is un- unreal. We well, see the man. He moves the ball around. Yeah, gets time. Yeah, like it's, and that was probably something that that lacked in that first innings. There, there wasn't really a whole lot of swing when they got that s- second new ball uh, on on the evening late late of day one. Yeah, it started hooping a little oh, bit. Yeah. But that first ball, for whatever reason, it just it didn't seem to be swinging too much for the Aussies. Uh, and Cummins also got three for 48. They were the pick of the bowlers. Australia goes in and, oh, my word, it, it looked like it was going to be a real disaster. They ended up making 191, yep. uh, pretty much off the back of a captain's knock from Tim Payne. He finished uh, unbeaten 73. They were like seven for 111, so they were looking like they might only make 130, 140. So 190. Finished 60 runs behind the Indians. Pretty good result considering how it could have been. Well, I think they'd be quite happy with that considering both Payne and um, Labuschagne. Uh, Labuschagne, I think, got 47. Seven? Yep, yeah, 47. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's 100 and what? 30? 140 between the two of them? Yeah, 73 plus 47 120. is 120. Yeah. yeah. So 120 of the 100. Plates. Yeah. 120 of the 191. So. Yeah, it's like. Like sixty percent of the yeah. Aussie runs from but two guys. Labuschagne was dropped on twelve, mm-hmm. should have been out, and then Payne I think was dropped on seventeen. Few drop well. catches should have been out, mate. You when, could imagine where Australia would have been when the Indians <laughs> learn how to field because their fielding was pretty woeful in the um, ODI series as well. When they start sticking some catches, oh my goodness, they're going to be so hard to to beat in oh, any format. Yep. Uh, what was going on with the Australian uh, batsmen? Was were guys throwing away their wicket or was it a Good bowling performance from the Indians or a bit of both? I thought Wade and um, you look like Burns were – Burns, I think, was the most unstated. Wade looked mm. like he uh, could potentially go on, but he gets gets done by a really good um, LBW. And then, of course, uh, Burns, which I think is probably what they're concerned with Burns, mm. trying to play across his legs. Mm-hmm. Of course, hits him on the foot and he gets LBW as mm. well. Just getting that leg stump. Yeah. Uh, they they, they – was uh, the umpire ruled him out? They review it, and it was umpire's yeah. call just grabbing the leg stump. New rules come in regarding the uh, DRS, so mm-hmm. three um, rather than two for yeah. both sides. And if it's umpire's call, mm-hmm. they the keep blo- it. They keep their review. Yeah. Obviously, the bloke's mm-hmm. still out, so Burns has to go there just from it, just grabbing the outside of the leg stump. But they keep their review, so it means there is. More there, there was a shitload of reviews. Yeah. I was trying to think of it. It was like, yeah, everyone's reviewing. Oh, yep. When are yeah. they going to run out? But yeah. Yeah. So obviously that rule change, uh, you know, is bringing a few more reviews into the game. And I don't mind that. It does slow it down a little bit. The purists seem to think, you know, they tend to be a little bit anti technology in terms of the game being slowed down. In a test match rather than a short, you know, an ODI. I think it's fine. Uh, yeah. I like it. You've got five days there, a couple of minutes to make sure the call's right. Um, I don't, I don't mind yeah. it at all. And there were a few howlers yeah. in this as well. Like mm-hmm. I know yeah. Nathan Lyons won. He he had a massive inside edge on. It and he got given out LBW and went mm-hmm. upstairs. Of course, clearly he wasn't out. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think there was one other one that very similar. But if I run through the the batters, so Steve Smith gets out for one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was out there for about thirty balls yeah. and didn't really look like to. Um, I, th- I try, think try and attack the Indians was trying to sort of. Get his eye in and ended up uh, schnicking off from Ravi Ashwin to first slip. Yeah, so I think that's probably a good ball from Ashwin to get him out. Like That's good bowling. He bowled well. Yeah, yeah. Labuschagne to get out next. Uh, well, we didn't get out next, but he, 
he four so next to the bats. Next to the batsman, he, he's he got a you know a good ball that stayed low that hit him in the legs. So mm-hmm. um, kind of surprised him, I think. So I think that's a, a fair wicket. That was from Yadav, wasn't it? Yes, from yep. Yadav. Uh, yes, and then because I think Cummins came in next and he got um, a shorter ball that then bounced a lot more. So that was probably a good ball that got it out of the out of the um, pitch and he just he just tails up and goes to the um, guys fielding. Maybe gully? No, that's no, probably not right. Um, Pass the swoop cordon around the back there. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the Travis Head dismissal? I think Travis Head threw away his wicket because he just spoon fed it straight back to Ashwin. Yeah, yeah. you could see there was no mid on there. He was trying to just use his feet and play it through mid on. And unfortunately, yeah, just hit it straight back to Ravi Ashwin. It was yeah. probably one of the more disappointing dismissals out of the recognised bats for me. Yeah, I thought Cameron Green threw his wicket away. He was just trying to smash the ball out of the park and then he just kind of it got up on him a bit more, so he didn't hit it with the meat of the bat. He hit it with the, the top half of the bat and he there, just got there no to be, weight behind There it. to be hit, I think, that ball, the execution obviously no nah. good. Got it high on the bat and a pretty good catch. Yeah, uh, and Coley makes Coley. Coley. Yeah, real, they real just catch. they only dropped the sitters. <laughs> yeah. Well, Coley didn't drop anything, so anything no. that went to him, he gobbled it up. Yeah, he sure did. Um, so then that Green got out, Commons off covered, Starkey, how did Starkey get out? Uh, run out. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Coming back for two. And, and who, it was who, from the from the deep and uh, quite quite a good bit of fielding there. Yeah, who ran him out? Was it Tim Payne at that point? Well, he was batting with Tim Payne. I, it was probably – I don't think it was Payne's fault. The Stark would have had the call to go back for two there. It was just – it seemed well, to be – Well, on the, on the coverage, so as soon as Payne hits it, he, he's going 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. So mm-hmm. they've already made that decision. Yeah, um, but that's when you've got to be aware of looking where the fielder is. And, yeah. yeah. I'd also think Payne probably should be more aware that he's running with Starkey, who's a big lad, big legs. He's, yeah, and not, say, Smudge or Warner. Yeah, yeah. He's, no, he's not going to get in between the wickets as quick as the others. Yeah. So Mind you – Play it safe, take the and one. Prob- but, probably not the best examples to use – Smudge and Warner because they probably don't bat with Tim Payne that often, whereas no. he would bat with Mitchell Stark quite often. often yes. So yeah, if, again, very disappointing to see a run out like that in Test cricket. That's more like a forty fifth over through an ODI type. Yeah. Two. Uh, Considering they didn't need to at that point, they no, just, they just no. need to just keep slow, slowly ticking it over. They didn't have to um, push to get two. There's no limit of what they need to do at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then Nathan Lyon, uh, yeah. also a little bit cheaply dismissed. You yeah, would, I think, think spoon-fed it to Coley. That's that's a cheap one. And then uh, Josh Hazelwood uh, sort of pretty much just gave Pujara some catching practice, got a, like a little bit of a shorter ball, could have left it. Uh, it was very close to his body, and he's just trying to guide it over uh, the slip cordon. Yeah. It's a pretty risky shot to be playing, especially, especially if you're a bowler. <laughs> yeah. and Especially if you're 11. And, yeah, and if you're batting with Tim Payne, who's – who's making a few runs. 73 at that point. Yeah, so. yeah. To, to get out like that, again, a little bit disappointing. Um, different story if it's Nathan Lyon and Josh Hazelwood out there. You'd probably just try and pilfer as many runs as you can at that stage. Uh, it, it was a little bit, yeah, a, a li- a, to, to see Payne run out of support at the end there from his bowlers, they obviously, they could it could have been a lot worse, but it could have been a lot better if they were able to, to support the captain there. Yeah, I think they could have easily have stuck in maybe another 20 if Hazelwood stays in. Mm-hmm. I reckon they could have made mm-hmm. 200. So. Would, have, would have loved to have seen Tim Payne get his maiden test ton. He's yeah. 36 years old. He's got 750s, high score on it of 92. Mm-hmm. Obviously, 27 more runs when you're batting with the tail is a bit of a... It's a challenge. Yeah. It's, a, it's a challenge, but yeah. you do see it sometimes when guys can manipulate the strike and their bowlers do support them. Uh, so he's still chasing that elusive uh, maiden test ton. Mm. Uh, yeah. Ravi Ashwin, best of the bowlers with four for 55. And Umesh Yadav uh, into the test team, obviously didn't play in any of the shorter format games. He was pretty good, three for 40. Uh, Boomer as well, two for 52 of his 21 overs. He They could barely get him away in his opening spell. And just with that short run up and that action, just yeah, yeah he was really troubling our openers especially. Mm. So to answer your question, I think it was probably half and half. Half of it was definitely India – Good bowling attack to get the get the batsman out, mm-hmm. um, but then the other half maybe threw it away a little bit. Yeah, they like could have been could have been better off. But it's interesting because the, where the pitch is playing, you always want to see the second team battle on it, see how they go. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's too much happening in the pitch. There's a little bit of up and down. That's probably mm-hmm. about it at the mm-hmm. moment. Um, yeah, it the spinners aren't. It's not turning huge amounts. No, I mm. think there is just that just that little bit there for the bowlers in terms of the inconsistencies yeah. in in the bounce. We'll see what it does. Today, day yeah. three, mm-hmm. uh, playing on that with uh, Australia having to come in. So, well, they ba- they were all out, so they bowled the last 
Seven overs, Something like I think. that, Seven yeah. Seven or eight overs and the ball, last night. The ball was hooping mm-hmm. and uh, proved she sure gets uh, skittled again for just the yeah. four runs. A bit of a forgettable test match for him. Yes, yes. And Cummins getting that wicket, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, they resume and we'll be able to chat about yeah. uh, the result on the next episode of On the Esky. Uh, an awesome battle so far. I really enjoyed it. It's pretty different mm. to the first, you know, often the first test in Australia. Back in the day, it always used to be the Brisbane test. Yeah. Uh, you'd see an opposition team come down here and get absolutely trounced. Mm. Uh, and, you know, the Aussies go out and make 500 and it'd be pretty one-sided. Yeah. Love to watch it as an Aussie cricket fan. Uh, but as a world cricket fan, really good to see the, these two teams just going at it. And yeah. shapes up to be a really great finish to the test. I think Australia really need to bowl well today if they want to get back into this test. Because mm-hmm. I, th- I think anything over 300 is probably not doable for them. They want to get them in that 2 to 250 range, and they already got a 50 run lead. So. Yeah, six, 59 run lead. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think I'll go less. I think they need to bowl them out for about 200 yeah. Yeah, to, to be a really well, good. Well, yeah, if they get them out for 200 a day, that'll be 250 in total. Is that mm-hmm. what you're saying? Or, yeah, 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 yeah. I think if they get around that, they're definitely in chance. Um, they're chasing anything. 300, maybe if they bat well. Yeah, but anything after over that, you're just like, they're going to have more than enough time to bat, I reckon. Time's not going to be an issue. This time's game's probably going to be over yeah. tomorrow evening sometime. Yes, yeah. I could very well see that. Yeah. Bat- batting in the evening, very hard. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, we will see. Well, it depends on what India wants to do as well. If they could bat. Hope if they can get through the night session, they might battle. Or well, they could battle day tomorrow as well. Oh, if, if they, I'll tell you right now, if they're batting tomorrow, we lose this test. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but how good. Test match cricket is back. Uh, mm. Australia's first game in 12 months. I think India were able to get two out earlier in the year before uh, COVID put mm. a halt on all test match cricket. Uh, the other cricket that's been going on, the Big Bash League, uh, is under full swing. There is a game currently uh, underway between the Hobart Hurricanes and the Melbourne Renegades. Uh, the Canes need 58 runs of 30, 53 balls at present. McDermott and Ingram at the crease. You'd think they'd probably get that. Yeah. The first ever morning game in a, in the Big mm-hmm. Bash. Well, it started about 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, Roughly about that. ten. Yeah, between 10.30 and 11 they would yeah. have started. So. so obviously they're trying to get jam as much cricket into uh, today as they can. Getting a Big Bash game in before the Test Cricket starts at 3 o'clock. Love that as a cricket fan. I didn't even realise that it was a morning game until yeah. till, uh, Sean points out, that, oh, there's, there's cricket on right now. I said, cricket all day. I sit said, on the couch and take I it said, easy. No, mate. It's a, I said, it's a day-night test. It doesn't start for a few hours. He says, no, there's a, a morning game. So, <laughs> unreal. Probably for the boys, reminds them of their junior days, you know, going to cricket at 10 o'clock in the morning. They probably yeah. haven't played uh, short format cricket at that time for a long time. Uh, obviously, Test Cricket and Shield Cricket, different story, but playing a 2020 and, yeah, being done at, yep. you know, 2 o'clock's pretty unusual for yeah, them. Yeah, like, we're not playing yeah. under lights. What is this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, interesting uh, by Cricket Australia there. Oh, I love it. Just means more cricket. Yeah. Run us through the, the games that have happened since Yeah, so there was week. five games since we uh, broadcast last. I'll just give a quick summary of each one. Uh, the Hurricanes uh, made 174. They beat the uh, Adelaide Strikers by 11 runs. Darcy Short made 72. Wes Agar, the best for the Strikers, with two for 28. The Canes look to have this game really wrapped up uh, pretty early. They had the Strikers at nine for 102, so they needed uh, 70, 73 runs out of their 10th wicket. Seems impossible, really. Enter Daniel Worrell and Danny Briggs. Worrell makes 62 unbeaten. Briggs with 35. The highest ever 10th wicket partnership uh, in the Big Bash. A 61-run partnership uh, takes that record. Unfortunately, they just couldn't get the Bickies with the uh, victory. They lost by 11 runs. And James Faulkner was the best of the Canes bowlers with three for 21. Still close. Though. Yeah, yeah, unreal. I think... Uh, Big effort. For I, the 10th I, week. I was sort of watching a bit of this and it was a weeknight and I thought, oh, this is... And I said, I went to bed and then I checked the score. Jeez, <laughs> not a bad effort there out of the 10 and 11. Um, and then in game six, the Melbourne Renegades, uh, actually another record happened here. Mm. They got absolutely destroyed at the hands of the Sydney Sixers. Yep. Uh, 145 run thrashing. Uh, the Sixers Smoked made four, well. four for 205. Josh Philippe, he's really good. He's got a yeah. big bash ton before. He went five runs short with a quick fire 95. And Jordan Silk smoked 45 off 19 balls. In return, the Renegades got... got 60. Yeah, uh, bowled out for 60. I think it's the second <laughs> lowest score ever in the Big Bash. No batsman made more than 13 runs. 
and Ben Dorsis and Steve O'Keefe were the destroyers uh, for the Sixers. A game to uh, to forget for the Melbourne Renegades. Game mm. seven came down to Canberra. Uh, the Brisbane Heat uh, made six for 178. They lost to the Sydney Thunder by two wickets in one of the more interesting games uh, of the round. Chris Lynn smashed 69 off 44. John O'Cook and Dan Sams, the pick of the bowlers for the Sydney Thunder. And then with the bat, Dan Sams, after making his debut for the Australian 2020 team uh, in the second and third games against India, mm-hmm. went absolutely ham, making 65 off 25 and steered them to victory there. Jack Wildermuth, the best of the bowlers for Brisbane. Game 8 saw the Hurricanes play again. They made 146, not enough uh, against the Adelaide Strikers. They ended up winning that game by five wickets. McDermott and Colin Ingram both made 46. And how about be Peter Siddle? Siddle. <laughs> the fourth ever uh, best bowling figures in the Big Bash. Picks up five, five for 16. That's unreal. Yeah, don't That's forget crazy. about Banana Boy. He is still <laughs> a pretty handy uh, bowler, especially in the short formats. And uh, Jake Weatherald made 68, Alex Carey 55 for the Strikers to steer them f- to victory. And then the ninth game between the Perth Scorchers and Sydney Thunder was abandoned after heavy rain in Hobart. The Scorchers had made 158 off their 17. Uh, Colin Munro and Ashton Turner, the best of the bats there, but no result out of that game. Was there another heat game last night? I could be wrong. No. So the last two nights, they haven't played because, okay. of, because of the test cricket. And now there's this game now between the Hurricanes and the Renegades. And there's another game tomorrow. I, I assume it's another morning game to yep. uh, avoid the clash with the pink ball test. Yeah. Did you see the Chris Lynn and I can't remember who the other batsmen were had to... Um uh, sit in the naughty corner because they. Oh, no, what happened? Oh, they they somehow breached one of the one or several of the COVID rules that they'd kind of put in place. Mm-hmm. Um, so they during the game they were isolating them, so they had to sit off to the side by themselves. <laughs> so they just sit there in the pads, just waiting for their turn, uh, just by themselves. <laughs> so the whole game just lying on the sidelines by themselves. They go foreign leg to foreign yeah. leg in the field as well, <laughs> yeah. staying away. Probably, probably. <laughs> they were, had to social distance from everyone else. So yeah, they looked like they're in the naughty corner for very, the whole game. Very strange year we're having, isn't it? Well, there mm-hmm. there was also the chat about Mitchell Stark um, having to self. He um, what did he do? He self isolated. Last Friday, before he came over to Adelaide, because mm. if he hadn't and he hadn't done that last Friday for the cutoff, um, I'm not sure where he'd been that caused this. Mm. But they mm. would have pulled him out of the field yesterday, so he wouldn't have bowled because he would have. They would have had to self isolate him again and test him because he, he must have been in the Northern Beaches on around the 11th or something. Uh, okay, so um. they're were, they were concerned about him. I know so weird after they've already – I guess it makes sense. You want to limit the exposure, yeah. but after they've already been exposed to everyone, like obviously yeah, he would they've be already been in the locker team bus and locker yeah. room <laughs> and out in the field and giving high fives and squeezing bums. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very very strange. But, yeah. but So uh, it's probably – I'm not sure who Brett Lee's commentating for, so it's caused issues for them because he's gone home because mm-hmm. he lives on the Northern Beaches. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. So he's gone home from Adelaide so he can be home for Christmas, depending on what happens, because mm-hmm. he doesn't want to miss Christmas with his kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so, of course, they're now down, Brett Lee. I'm not sure if he's on Channel 7. I, can't, I think it makes sense if he's on Channel 7. Yeah, I think 7, yeah. yeah. So it kind of explains why Punt is probably carrying that commentary at the moment. Yeah. Because, mm. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it's pretty, let's go, say, with average <laughs> <laughs> compared to what uh, Foxtel and slash KO have been putting on. I tend to agree with that. Uh, although after doing a few episodes of these, I have realised it is pretty hard to talk into a microphone for extended periods. True. So, yeah, I'd, I'll just say my personal preference is to watch Fox Sports commentary. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think just the amount of technical detail and they've got a lot more former players and a lot more big name former players. Mm-hmm. Like Punter's 100% carrying the seven yeah. commentary. Like yeah. It's clear. Um, I don't mind like, having Flem and JB and that on. There, like you get the you get the same big bash commentary that you, you mm-hmm. you're used to mm-hmm. seven, but I think just for the when those guys go off and then you know the the other groups are rolling through, they're doing commentary. Too many just, journos, not enough cricketers. Yeah, they're just not carrying it properly. Yeah. Or they're just not talking about the right things, and it's like the tone is either you know maybe it's more radio, and it just seems I don't want to say boring, but it it's too dry. The tone's just wrong. Whereas you want like you know. 
I was listening to Hussey and Warney get stuck into each other the other night. Like the back and forth, a bit more banter. The guys yeah. have played together a bit. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. there's all that chemistry existing exactly. already when you've got guys like Huss, Warney, uh, Gilly, Gilly uh, Mark War would have played with a few of them. Yeah, Mark Howard mm. was another one. Yeah, Howie, Howie obviously never played them. Never yes. played, but yeah. I've, I've been I'm around commentary for a long big time. Big Mark Howard fan myself. Uh, one of the best journos uh, slash presenters in the game. Uh, yeah, probably Fox Sports for mine. But Well, I think they, they when that Channel Channel 9 split happened, they've taken, uh, let's say, most of the A team that yeah, was Channel 9 have gone sure. over to Foxtel. For sure. Instead of following it to the big bash and that to um, 10 and, and now to seven. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That wrap up our week in cricket just a bit. I believe so. I don't think there's anything else to tackle with the cricket. Can't uh, wait. Otherwise. Can't wait for tonight. Yeah. And yeah. Day three starts in 30, 40 minutes. Not long at all. Go what's, to the Aussies. What's going on in the, in the NRL? Any, uh, there's been a few rumors. Uh, most, mostly rumors, of course, being the off season. Um, there's talk about, uh, as always, Brisbane gets a lot of media attention. There's a lot mm -hmm. of, um, uh, will we call them snitches? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of leaks, streets, snitches, we, uh, whistleblowers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we call them snitches out in the street. <laughs> yeah. And you know what they get too. They get stitches. Um, <laughs> or bitches, I forget which one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there, there seems to be a lot of leaks, leaks that come out of Brisbane. And Brisbane, of course, makes the news a lot because they're one of the premier clubs. Like them and the Roosters are probably the top two. Well, yeah, they in terms of membership and... Yeah. And news potential. Yeah, but the yeah. Broncos always seem to have a little bit. Yeah. So, of course, the one rumour out of there is they're looking to move Matt Lodge, who's on a massive contract at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and the rumour very much is uh, they're happy to pay out over half his contract, which is about worth 1.6. Mm -hmm. I think his overall deal is like five years, 3.2. That's it. I didn't realise he was on such a big deal. Yeah, it's because I think he played, he played one year on his tiny contract, like he's back into football. Mm -hmm. Um, then the following year they gave him another deal and he did well that year and then he got this big deal. Right. Uh, and then there was talk about him being the captain for his Brisbane and then all the hoopla and that came with that. Mm -hmm. uh, big off-season story didn't end up happening. Um, but, yeah, it sounds like either Walters is – because I think Walters was there when they brought Lodge in too because I think Wayne was around. That was like Wayne's last or second last yeah, year. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Um that uh, Matt Lodge was brought in. So he's obviously like, yeah, I don't, he's on too much money and I don't think he, he was hurt a lot last year. Mm. He's not providing value. Let's spend that money elsewhere uh, to the point where we're happy to take a big loss on it, get rid of his contract and we'll pay pay out half of it for the next probably four years. I think it's what's left yeah. on it. Yeah, a lot. Uh, I don't know. I wonder what's gone, what's gone on there, you know, if there's been a falling out or yeah. something. He, his play hasn't been that bad over the last couple of years. Yeah. Probably a little bit quiet this year, but... He was hurt a lot this year, so yeah. that's one of the reasons. I think 2019 he had a pretty big year. Yeah. So whether they're just... I want to get young, get the younger guys mm. in, and Lodge doesn't have a future there, who knows? But I don't think there's been any more talk about where he'll go in. Um, it's just Brisbane, if they're going to pay half his contract, want him gone bad. Mm. By the sounds of it. So we'll uh, follow up what happens there. Of course, as we said, it is just a big old rumour at yeah. this stage. Yeah. And then... Spe Lee, speaking of big old rumours... Speaking of rumours, the continual rumour, and I think you said this on the last podcast. Yeah, it's been going on for a little bit now. Because yeah. uh, Cameron Smith bought a house on the Gold Coast or mm -hmm. around in that area. Um, this talk he may retire. He does, I think, have one... No, he's off contract, so his contract's actually ended. Yep. So he yep. could go anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're saying, well, hey, he's going to come to the Titans and play a year. Um, the Storm... Um, owner said last week that, hey, I think he's going to retire. Well, if not, he probably plays a year for the Titans maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Big big old rumour. It's one of the uh, big, bigger ones at the moment. Obviously a yeah. massive name, future, the, Im well, the future guy, immortal. So, yeah. yeah. In yep. some people's eyes, one of the best, well, the best. He's the best hooker, no doubt. Like, oh, you can't no doubt. That. And in some people's minds, the best rugby league player. Yeah. That's a completely... Massive can of worms that we won't get uh, time to discuss today. But, yeah, uh, be very interesting to see if he does have a year up there. Maybe he's just going to retire on the Gold Coast. If I'm Cameron Smith, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just won the premiership. Fuck it. I'm retired. I'm, I'm going to go just spend the time with kids. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm going to move, yeah. home, move back up home and then take it easy. I think I've said it before on the podcast. You Love or hate the bloke, you've got to respect the, 
the um, just the attrition that his body's been through during a, yeah, an illustrious career, yeah. over 500 games uh, between the NRL State of Origin and the national team. That is just yep. absurd amount of rugby league, especially playing his position and even possibly a little undersized as a, as a hooker. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, he would have made yeah. tens of thousands of tackles. Oh, definitely. And 100%. the amount of work he gets through, like you say, yeah, yeah. it's crazy. So. Mm-hmm. so if he does retire, is his next move media or coaching? Good question. Well, because he had that whole big thing with Channel 9 um, a couple of years ago after mm. they painted him pretty badly after the um, – I've forgotten the new Newcastle um, bloke's name. Is it McKinnon? Yeah. Um, uh, Alex McKinnon. Alex yeah. McKinnon. Like, yeah, Channel 9 kind of got stuck into him and, you know, it was all heat of the moment stuff and we won't go into that detail. But he gave him a big cold shoulder to mm. the point I don't think he did an interview with them for about three years. Oh, uh, I didn't realise it went on for that long. Yeah, I think it was a very yeah. long time. Uh-huh. Like, it was a very long – so towards – I think it was not last year, maybe the year before, he started opening up. I think he did – might have been even towards the end of his origin career. which I heard, Was that two years ago? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think it was roughly mm. around there. Like his last game he kind of – he did an interview before the end of it, just yep. you know, say his farewells, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, it was that, last, was, that yeah. was last season, so eighteen months ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. End of twenty nineteen yep. was his last Origin. Yeah. So, and I think it, that was like his first. In, that was the only interview he did that year for Channel Nine. Yeah, and some of the stuff that was said about that incident, obviously a horrible accident. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yep. Yeah, it, it, just really garbage journalism, in, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, no one ever wants that. It was a horrible thing that happened to Alex. It. it Actually doing really well in his rehab. Oh, he he's, keeps going as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think I, I think his wife is having a baby, or may have just had a baby. I'd have to double check that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all the best, obviously, to to Alex. But yeah, just really gross journalism to even be, yeah, yeah, saying anything to do about Cameron Smith's mm. involvement. But in you that. could you could see a much bigger difference this year because mm-hmm. he did a lot of pre-match and post-match yeah, he did. the storm. Yep. Yep. He was on the commentary for some of the the definitely the Queensland state of origin, the one yep. in Queensland. He was mm-hmm. there on the on the the cast. I can't remember if he did the other two because I know he definitely did the Queens the one in at Suncorp because he was there with JT and hey, the I King and that. He didn't do the other two because they were Based in Queensland, remember for the season. Yeah, the, that, that l- makes l- sense. The latter yeah. end of the season. Yeah, because yeah. he wasn't going to go to Adelaide, and then of course didn't want to go down to Sydney. So yeah, mm-hmm. the mate said that they were stuck in in Queensland. Uh, so my point being, he's kind of redoing that say relationship with Win, getting more involved in it. Mm. Um, interesting to see how he takes to that. Whether he's like uh, Cooper Cronk and gives um, some insights. Whether I don't think JT's super great as the colour on his calls. Like, he's good enough, but he doesn't add as much colour as some of the others could. Um, just, but just love his laugh, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's not, like, I think Andrew Johns is the third colour is kind of what you want to kind of get to. Yeah. Because, you know, I think um, usually the crew, I believe, is Rabbits, Gus and Johns, I think, are the three. Mm-hmm. Or Johns sli- and, slides and out for Sturlo occasionally. So, yeah, and yeah. Freddie uh, running the sideline. Side line. So, mm-hmm. like, mm. that's... That third colour position, I think, is where you kind of want to see whether Cam could get to that. Because I don't think he's going to be running the sideline. Because no. that's usually the funny blokes kind of position. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Sam Thido kind of thing running along there. Um, Maybe he could have Gus's job. I'm sure a lot of people in Australia <laughs> yeah, once, yeah, <laughs> wouldn't mind once. that. Um, anyway, so, yeah, we're getting defi- hi- highly defi- speculative. Highly here. speculative. Here, but mm. I think as long as he keeps progressing, yeah, he, well, he seems, from what I've seen, like he seems good enough. He can talk. Talk the talk, got a lot of stories. Uh, obviously, there's, a you know, again, the rumours about his relationship with Cooper, so whether he joins Channel 9 or Foxtel, because I think Cooper's at Foxtel yep. at the moment, so maybe he go, doesn't want to go there. Like, who knows? See what happens. From mm. one uh, Melbourne Smith 9 to another Melbourne Smith 9. Yeah, so... Yeah. I put the loose cheese. Are they yeah, going to move him on? I think so, because I just wanted... The note I put here is to confirm that Harry Grant is actually going to go back to Melbourne. Mm-hmm. So they've confirmed that he will be the nine next year. Okay. Uh, so maybe that rules out a spot for Cameron. So that can, again pushes him more towards uh, retirement mm-hmm. because they're mm. like, hey, yeah, Harry Grant's going to be our nine next year. That's what we're going forward with. Mm. Uh, Brandon Smith is probably a great number two guy. You can come off the bench, play yep. a lot in the second row if you want. But I think they're looking – I think Smith wants to start somewhere, so right. they're looking to move him as well because I think they've got another bloke there that can play nine. Jeez, that's uh, some depth. Though. Yeah, that's always huge depth for 
the hooker's down there. So, yeah, it looks like he's going to be moved on and talks probably somewhere in Queensland. I think Smith wants to go back up north because I think he's from there originally. Right. As a lot of the Melbourne guys are. They get yeah, down yeah. there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And another guy set to leave the Melbourne Storm uh, at the end of the 2021 mm-hmm. uh, season. We've mm-hmm. spoken a lot about it uh, on the Esky so far. The Fox, Josh Adokar, he's signed... Put yep. the pen to paper with the Canterbury Bulldogs. He's on a four-year yep. deal, valued at about two million dollars. Uh, probably don't need to spend too much time on this because it's been a. It's exact, hot, exact as we've covered it. Like yeah, he's, hot, he's, hot yeah. point of discussion hot, of ours. He's put he's put pen to paper, so it's official. Yep. Yep. Whether he plays wing or fullback, that's probably the next interesting. Well, he's thing. on winger money there. Maybe yes. he want to play a little bit of fullback, uh, as we've spoken about. Would be interesting to see him in the one. Mm. Uh, what's going on in the AFL? Uh, not overly much. Probably the biggest story to come out of the AFL this week was with Eddie Maguire has decided that he's going to step down as president of the Magpies at the end of next year. Mm-hmm. So he's given them 13 months notice, I think, yeah. in total. Because uh, he didn't want to just quit and then they have to find some bloke that's then going to struggle and make a lot of mistakes and always be compared to what Eddie had done for the last well, 22 years. I yeah, think it'll be out. 23 years by the end of this yeah. season. Uh, huge Shoes to fill, obviously. It's, uh, Eddie Maguire yeah. synonymous with uh, the Collingwood football team. So uh, whether they hire someone and bring him in, or they've got someone there they think is going to take over, yeah, maybe Eddie, get maybe tw- Eddie's mentoring exactly. someone there. You'll get twelve months of Eddie mentoring to mm-hmm. kind of take over the club mm. um, as president. Mm. Um, interesting kind of timing as well, because really there's nothing out there to say why Eddie's made this decision. Of yeah. course, he's been there a long time. He's now in his fifties, fifty six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whether his commitments with Millionaire and his radio and all the other stuff finally he's had enough or whether there's a little bit of chat, chat in the background about to trying to move him on or he's doing too much other stuff instead of focusing on the Magpies who are in a very much a full rebuild at the moment, mm. trying to clear out their lists and get a whole bunch of young blokes in. Mm-hmm. So mm. whether that's part of it or he's not happy with the direction and he's going to move on or just, you know, 23 years, let's do something different. Obviously a highly polarising figure, uh, Eddie Maguire, so who knows what's been going on in the boardrooms there, if it's yeah. his decision or if it's sort of someone's forced his hand. Yeah, maybe he's getting less less fingers in like the, the club side of it and he's got yeah. more on the, the so the administration on the house side of it mm-hmm. than, than the roster, I mean. So, yeah, who, who knows really. Uh, maybe it'll come out in the not-too-distant future about why his decision, but at this stage he's just... Said he's going to step down at the end of next year. Maybe Channel Nines needs him to step up his game with who wants to be a millionaire because uh, I tell you what, <laughs> love me millionaire back in the day, but as uh, soon as that uh, Channel Seven got the chase, big fan, big fan, <laughs> much more. It's it's a lot quicker. It's a lot quicker. You get to sh- you know really test your brain with those cash builders and that final chase. Love love me a little bit of the chase. Well, I think that's why Millionaire <laughs> kind of changed their format up so much yeah. over the years mm-hmm. to try to increase the speed and try to make it a bit more faster, etc. But, um, yeah, I, I didn't realise this was a game show <laughs> podcast. <laughs> now talking about how they've improved uh, game shows. but <laughs> Mate, on the Esky, we have a beer and we, we we just have a chat, don't we? There's, there's been a few little uh, topics that have slid in, like US <laughs> politics that probably have no place on this show. But we just try to keep it all uh, yeah. all authentic and all natural. I'm just letting the listeners know that I love the chase. Yeah. <laughs> End of discussion. <laughs> So, yes, we should just see what the pies and how they look like with their year of rebuilding and what they look like without Eddie there because it's been a storm word. Oh, he'll probably still attend every game they play. Oh, yeah, he's a huge he fan. Lo- lifetime member. Yeah, yeah lifetime member. Yeah. He'll, he'll always be around the club, just not as president. And um, I'm not sure whether his presidential duties of late have been more on that, definitely that metre side, trying mm. to build up like the membership base and the do, you know, make the club money versus. Mm. The, the, the playing talent, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, who knows? We're not in the boardrooms. No. The other little bit of, I suppose it's AFL-related news, uh, unfortunately Damien uh, Hardwick, the uh, Richmond coach, uh, and his wife, they're parting ways. Uh, it's t- two in two weeks. High-profile um, mm. coaches, obviously Nathan Buckley, we spoke about yeah. last week. Both former we, players as well. Both former players. We don't want to really talk about personal issues you know we wish them all the best uh you know divorce is obviously a very messy thing yep. the thing that we've mm. probably wanted to uh have a look at is it's just how highly stressful it is to be an afl coach and obviously that has ramifications in the you know in family life and yeah well yeah. you look at both these blokes so, you know both long-term players both long-term marriages so they've been yep. around from their playing careers mm-hmm. now into their coaching careers mm-hmm. 
And I'd say coaching is probably more stressful and more time than playing. So I would say that by yeah, five fivefold. Yeah, 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 factor like of two, factor of five. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more involvement. So indeed, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's speculating. You know, wives probably thought after they're retiring, they might be seeing their husbands a lot more. Yeah. Now they got yeah. into coaching, they're seeing them even less. Yeah. Um, it, it can cause a lot of strain, and especially on relationships and. Um, the whole mental side of it, mm. it just makes mm. it all very, very difficult. Yep. Do not envy coaches at all. Not at all. Don't know why you'd want to be one, to be honest. No. But uh, obviously both legends. Uh, Hardwick's got three premierships now with the Tigers. I think Buckley had one and obviously a, a stellar career um, himself. Uh, yeah, very sad to see it happen. Uh, yeah, well, That takeaway from us was just, it just reiterates this high stress environment of being an AFL coach and obviously wish those blokes in there and their um you know soon to be ex wives all the best for the future. Oh yeah. I'll Hopefully the families can they can you know be all mutual and their families can kind of stay together that family unit. Like yeah. Yeah. They're the kids they've I think they both had at least two kids so um I think they're a bit older it's like in their teenage years. Yeah. But yeah you still, still never nice. It's still never, never nice. nice no. Feel for them. But yeah, other than that, pretty quiet really in the <laughs> yeah. NFL. And it's coming into Christmas. There's, it's yeah, I don't think they start their preseason until next year. Some of them are probably in the in the um, in the gym, but nothing. Oh no, nah, sure. there's been there's been trainings. There's been a lot of trainings, but they, I think they're all obviously on breaks now. Yeah, yeah the, the, the AFL draft was probably the last big news out mm-hmm. of that, and um, all those young blokes will be moving around the country, getting settled. Um, hopefully can move around the country and get yeah. settled with mm. all the stuff that's going on and for sure. be around family for Christmas. And uh, the Rugby World Cup draw has come out. Uh, in Very interesting, the drawing drawing the draw. <laughs> two <laughs> years beforehand. Two or is it, well, it's two and a half. Like two and a half, sorry, it is, yeah, well, it's, it's still 2020. It's so about to be yeah. 2021. So, yeah, two two and a half years yeah, before the actual uh, World Cup starts in to the, to the France point, to the point where half the draw isn't even finalised yet. So well, it's always like that. So yeah, yeah the uh, all the teams that are guaranteed have been think, picked. Yeah, so it's a twenty t- team comp. Uh, there's twelve teams that uh, are guaranteed, so they've all been put in their groups. Yep. Uh, the Wallabies get Wales and Fiji, Fiji which is the same. I group. think it's the same as last yeah, time. Yeah, isn't they had it? the same group as they did last yeah. last World Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, but they beat Fiji and lost to Wales, I yeah. believe. Wales are good yeah. these days. Oh, They're definitely. Yeah, really mm. good. So very impressive out of a country of about three and a half million people. Yep. The Welsh, they love their rugby. They love mm-hmm. their sheep farming and their rugby. <laughs> um, so, Just yeah. like the New Zealand. <laughs> 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 yep, yep, that's pretty good. And also love to point out here that uh, Australia's got some of the most I think we've got more sheep than, we've got more than sheep New Zealand. Zealand. Yes. We're a big country, I suppose. But. Yeah, and we have more women, so... Yeah. We, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's probably enough easy uh, sheep jokes <laughs> that need to be made. It's going to be the 10th Rugby World Cup, uh, as I mentioned, hosted in France and Paris to get the Olympics the year after. Mm-hmm. So, big year for the Frenchies. Let's hope by then yeah. this will happen. No more COVID. Yeah. 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 <laughs> God, if we're still dealing with this in two and a half bloody years' time, oh. Jesus. Well, no vaccinations problem. and that have started in some places. Um, with we'll see yep. what the sort of results. Man, I'm giving if this is still a thing in two and a half years' time, I'm calling up me mate Elon Musk, say, mate, send me on that Mars <laughs> rover. And I'll, I'll I'll go take one for the team. I'm sick of this bullshit. <laughs> um, and that's about yeah. it for the local sporting yeah, for the domestic news sport and shit jokes for this week. And I think we'll move international and we'll start with a big one, of course. The only one, only major sport I think in the US playing at the moment. Yeah, yeah. where's the hockey yeah. stuff? We're obviously. Disclaimer, not big uh, hockey fans or knowledgeable yeah. with the hockey. I think the basketball's the pre-season, pre-season, pre-season. basketball is next week. So the preseason's underway. We will get into yep. that. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I, th- I think you're right. I think it is uh, one of the only big four sports to be underway at the moment in the States. Yep. Very unusual. Obviously, COVID effect. Well, they had all four COVID playing in October. So. Yeah, <laughs> and, and this time of the year, obviously, baseball's normally finished up, but yeah. you would have uh, the hockey and the uh, – Basketball running along yeah. with the NFL. Both Monks, can you just have, just have a look for the hockey? Because I know the Stanley yeah. Cup was later than um, so, usual. They're probably in a preseason or something. Yeah, so they're going, uh, again, a shortened schedule this year. I'm yep. um, hoping to kick off mid-January. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So still a yeah. while off. Still a while off. So they'd normally yeah. be a month into their season as the NBA would be by now. Mm. Um, but we'll get to the NBA in a sec. 
Mm-hmm. Have you yeah. got the NFL results there? Let's a big but, week to discuss week yes, fifteen. Yes. So, yeah. what games did we cover last week? We got so the Rams Patriots game on Thursday night football. That we, happened. Yes. That yeah. happened. So well, we, don't, we hadn't had the Sunday. Don't need to worry about that. We just need no. to get through Sunday, Monday. Yeah. All right. So easy. Let's start with Sunday. Let's start off at the top of Sunday. So, first game we have uh, Chicago at home. Smashing uh, the Houston Texans thirty six to seven, and uh, this is a on the Esky Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Made some uh, comments about Mitch Trubisky's quarterback play, which had been pretty ordinary. Uh, he went out there and had an absolute killer game here. Uh, he must have listened to the podcast himself. Get some fire in the belly. Say, oh, geez, these three idiots from down under don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'll show them, guys. Goes out, throws 267 <laughs> yards, three touchdowns, no picks. The Bears really dominate this one. Well, I think mm. the Bears in this played like they did when they went 5-1 and one to start the year. Yeah, it's, right. You know, play really, really good defense and, you know, get get the turnovers, get the ball back, get lots of three and outs, etc. Um, give your offense lots of opportunities where they can then – and in good situations so mm. they can score points. Mm. And – the Bears did, and Texans have. We said they've improved since they fired their coach, but they're still probably in the bo- bottom ten of the league this yeah, year. Yeah, def- definitely they're, in the they're bottom not, ten. They're and not one of the better teams. And this their year, defense so. just mm. isn't the same anymore, no, is it? It's JJ Watt and a bunch of who, yeah, um, especially you yeah. know they've got Roby out uh, suspended, Will mm-hmm. Fuller of course out suspended, so they're down a few blokes. Um, they lost uh, David Johnson, got COVID mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like a day before this game, so he was out. Um, so yeah, they're. No, they're not a great club. So the Bears no. demolished them. Absolutely, absolutely. What was yeah. that next game? Um, well, speaking of demolishing, uh, to continue on, we had uh, Dallas Cowboys um, beating Cincinnati Bengals 30-7 to in Cincinnati. We yeah. all picked this one. Uh, obviously, Joe Burrow's injuries really mm. de- de- derailed them. So. Dampened, yeah, the Cincinnati Bengals' un- otherwise lacklustre season. Uh yeah, we all picked the Cowboys and they took care of business. Yep. Uh, was it the Red Rifle back for this one? Yep. So, so that, that was our point. They've got – they of the two teams, they were the one with the real quarterback. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they won this game. And mm. uh, Brandon Allen did okay though. 27 36, 217 yards. Yeah, not bad at all. Compared at all. to Dalton who had 16 for 23 for 185. Do they run the ball well then? They must have. Zeke oh, they, they, they split it. Zeke yeah. and Pollard split it half and half because Zeke's got a calf injury at the moment. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But both teams got 100, 101 yards. On the so ground? On the ground, yeah. So maybe a bit. Hard, they, hard, hard, to, hard to pick this game. Yeah. Where, where's those extra points come from? Uh, they, have a, they did have two defensive touchdowns. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> That'll, yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that Cowboys defense, which everyone's been really destroying. Uh, this year coming up with a really nice game there. They've been better than in yeah. the last month than they were at the start of the they year. But they're, horrendous they've the got a lot of uh, mm. some of the guys that got hurt um, back as well. So they're both their linebackers, Lee and I've forgotten the other one. Van Der Esch. That's the one. Um, they're both back, I think, playing. So getting some talent mm. back on their defense. And could still win the NFC East. They're a game back? I think they're a game back yeah. from the football team. And the and a, Giants, I think, mm, are yeah. up there. So three. So we will get to the results shortly, but there was uh, three wins from NFC East teams mm-hmm. with the Eagles upsetting the Saints mm-hmm. and the football team also getting the win against the 49ers. Yep. Mm. Uh, so next up we had the Miami Dolphins at home losing to Kansas City Chiefs 27-33. to Pretty close game. Yeah, well, Dolphins did better than we thought we would. Yeah. Well, they picked off Mahomes three, three times. times. Yeah, that close. defense yes, is true. actually really good. Uh, yeah, we thought the Chiefs would probably do this a bit easier than they did. Uh, watch out for those Miami Dolphins. If yeah, if they can win another game or two, it looks like they'll play playoff football. And mm-hmm. if Tua can just sort of be a bit of a game manager uh, and just sort of rely on the back of that defense, maybe they could get a win in January. Yeah, most likely going to be second in that division, of course. Uh, but this game also for Mahomes uh, opened the window. Well, I... I'll open the door a little bit for Danger Russ and uh, Rogers to get back yeah. in the MVP conversation. Yeah, well, especially with Rogers yeah. having another really nice 
um, day. I think I had a look at the uh, MVP betting from our friends at Sportsbet, unofficial sponsors. Still waiting for the call. <laughs> uh, I think Mahomes has gone out to about a dollar sixty, which is the longest he's been in a while. And Rogers mm. is into two dollars fifty. I think they think. I think Russ's intercepts probably is going to. So that's kind hurt of him. That's probably what it brought back because I think. Touchdown yeah. wise, they're all very similar. Yeah, they're think, all high thirties. Yeah, I think Russ is at what twelve interceptions. Twelve at the picks. Mahomes, Mahomes would go to five, five, and I think Rogers is still on two. two. Yeah, he'd be either between that two and four. He's on four. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I think he had a one or two. In the That's last why one. we got the Jimmy the Chinaman. He's the best <laughs> in the business. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's what thirty nine touchdowns, four picks. Rogers. No, I think he's a bit less. He's thirty. I think he's throwing thirty. I'm pretty sure he's yeah. throwing thirty nine. Thirty nine. Thirty nine. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Well, that's a good. Yeah. That's so again, that touchdown record of which is fifty or 55? 55. Yeah. So I think, uh, that's I think Danger Russ is the only one that'll get close to that. So that's three pro- games to go. That's probably not in danger, you'd think. Because yeah. I think Russ is on forty two touchdowns. Yes, yeah, so he's got thirty six passing. And uh, uh, so and that's sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Thirty six passing. So I thought yeah, he had yeah. more. The pa- well, he's really slowed down over the last few weeks. Yeah. Because he, he, he was on fire the first. And I think eight. Mahomes is a 37 or 38 touchdowns. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you'd still think, you know, obviously he's a dollar fifty favourite. You'd think Mahomes should get the MVP this year. Mm. In terms of what he does that no one else can do, I, I, you know, I love the Packers and Aaron Rodgers, but Mahomes just does stuff that no one else can do. Yeah. Um, I think he was in my dream the other night. It was <laughs> <laughs> not one of those dreams. Oh, yeah, I was like, what sort of dream was this? <laughs> no, nah, I, I was just dreaming about football. It wasn't one of those dreams. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he he's <laughs> unreal, and every single game, obviously, probably had his worst game of the season here, getting picked off three times. But an absolute pleasure to watch. What next was our one. next game then? So next game we had New York Giants at home losing to the Arizona Cardinals seven to twenty six. Yeah, we thought this game might have been a little bit closer uh, than mm. it did turn out. Uh, shout out to the Greek freak Chris Pappas. He uh, Said the Giants were an anomaly beating Seattle the week before. He said, go Cards 14 plus. They obviously win this game by 19. So if any punters out there followed him, you would have had a little win. Uh, Kyler looked pretty good. Getting better. He had over 50 mm. yards rushing for the first time in, I think, in a month. So, oh, okay, yep. Because um, of shoulder, I think he hadn't been running as much. But with now healthy, getting more healthy, hopefully he can uh, keep it going and uh, help my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> we're going into the Being first, into the, the semi-finals in fantasy football yep. uh, this week. Uh, with the 49ers losing and the Cards winning, mm-hmm. probably think the 49ers are done and there still could be three teams from that NFC West which make the playoffs. Yep. Next one. Yep. Uh, so after that, we had Tampa Bay at home beating uh, the Vikings 26-14. to 14. Defense has sort of stepped up here. Mm. Uh, I think the both teams were able to run the ball pretty well. I think uh, Ronald Jones had 80 yards and a touchdown. Davin Cook had over yeah. 100. He's got the COVID now, though. Oh, uh, he's on COVID. Uh, and yeah. he's whose team was he on? Pappas's. Yep. Yeah. Mm. So Ronald's yeah. got the COVID, and who, Leonard Fournette hasn't been playing. Who are they going to have? I think Lashawn McCoy and McCoy's still there. And yeah. Kayshawn Vaughn. Vaughn. Yeah. Yep. So one of them will get the lead role. Okay. You wouldn't think McCoy at his age. He, they sort of use him as more of third down back. Yeah, yeah. The third, third down back. Third yeah. down back. So maybe Keyshawn Vaughn gets the start uh, this Sunday for the Bucks. Uh, Vikings are probably done now, or I think they are done. Oh, they're cooked. Yeah, yeah. They're not, not going any further. Uh, and mm. the Bucks should be there in January. Hopefully, next one. So after that, we had Carolina at home beating Denver. Sorry, Wrong. losing the <laughs> You had one job. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting all week for this. Uh, yeah. Losing to the Denver Broncos, uh, 27 to 32. Much uh, uh, to the enjoyment of Sean Redbeard and Gould over here. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And so Drew Lockhart had, yeah. had the best game, probably not just of this season, but of his career. Yep. Uh, well, it's his first four touchdown game. First four touchdown game. Uh, he had 280 yards passing, didn't turn the ball over. Mm-hmm. Looked really good. Yeah, there was a really solid game. It was a big step for him. Uh, he took a lot more – well, I don't want to say he checked down a lot, but he took a lot more of what the defense gave him. Didn't play the hero ball and try to force things. He mm. just 
Um, if a guy was covered that he was trying to throw it to, he actually brought it down, which was good to see. Um, it's the first time he'd done that, which had led to a lot of his intercepts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was good, which then helped a lot with um, uh, with trying to get after the Panthers' defense because a few of these big plays, like he'd just stare down one receiver, mm. um, draw in the entire secondary and then look away and there'd be a guy – Open with so much room. Mm-hmm. Um, Hamler had a good game. Yeah, uh, he he's, scored twice. he's really fast. He's quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so using that benefit, of course, and the run game supported him enough to keep it going, and the defense played well enough to keep the Panthers. Panthers actually got closer in this game than they probably should have. Mm-hmm. Um, in about the third and fourth quarter, Denver um, defense can kind of let up a little bit and then they got two touchdowns to get really back into this game. Uh, but then they clamped down towards the end of the fourth quarter and. Um, Shut, shut them down and got the win. Uh, so Mick, the interesting stories are this. Um, Bowles, McManus and Fant, I think, got some form of food poisoning. Uh. So Bowles didn't play. Mm-hmm. Fant played first like 10 snaps and then uh, did a run out of the bathroom and uh. wasn't, wasn't seen again <laughs> for the rest of the game. Uh-huh. Um, McManus played, missed two uh, extra points. Yeah. Um, and there's there's some jokes floating around that maybe he was shitting himself a little bit yeah. while out there. Clenching a bit hard. <laughs> Clenching a bit hard. Uh, he's unwell and not playing this week, and they've brought in a kicker from the XFL. So the leading uh-huh. XFL kicker uh-huh. is going to uh-huh. play a kick for Denver this week. There you go. So Must have been some pretty bad food poisoning. Yeah, because yeah. Cause it wasn't. It's all illness related. It wasn't COVID related, uh-huh. but yeah, they've obviously all had some sort of team. Well, they've had a meal together, and it's. Uh, the night before, and it's all they've had uh, the same hotel food, and it's yeah. just garbage, and they're all being so, it being yeah. sick. No good. So, yeah, no good. But it was good to Not see uh, them get a really good win, and I think they've got like a five percent chance to make the playoffs if they win out. And they finish eight, and eight. <laughs> Very unlikely. Believe. Uh, believe. 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 Just gonna There's believe. There's a chance. <laughs> so you're saying there's still a chance. <laughs> yeah, um, but that. Final point out of this, out of all the AFC West quarterbacks this week, um, well, in this this round mm-hmm. of football, uh, Drew Locke was the best. Yeah, Mahomes mm-hmm. probably had his worst game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carr, what did he played? Do? Played, yeah. They, but lost. It didn't, they lost, and he, I think he fumbled three times, didn't yep. he? Yeah. Yep. Um, and Herberts, they, I think they smoked New England. Or maybe that was a week. That before. was a week before. No, they lo- they, they beat the Falcons. They beat the Falcons. They adjust. adjust. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have a. Huge great game. So, Herbert yeah, lock the pick of the AFC QBs. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have thought? Uh, so, moving on, off the back of Derrick Henry, Tennessee Titans beat Jacksonville Jaguars 31-10 to 10 in Jacksonville. So, Titans win comfortably as predicted. Yeah. Mm. How about King Henry? Yeah. So, he gets 200 yards again. It's Oop. the fourth time he's done that in his young season. Is he uh, his young career, I should say. 460 yards short of 2K? Yeah, so with three games to go, again, could could do it. Could do yeah. it. Needs at least one yeah. more 200 run game, you'd think. And I think he's about 200 yards ahead of Dalvin Cook. Uh, so he'll de- definitely get that rushing uh, title barring injury. Um, and, yeah, he's so it's his fourth 200-yard fourth game. Uh, that moves him to third on that list, uh, tied with a guy called Ladanian Tomlinson. Yeah, I think there's some chat that... Say so if he does well this week, um, Vrabel might feed him over the last two games to get him to two k. Uh, really? They'll they'll they'll, 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 they'll push. It's kind for of it. the opposite of what you'd think leading into playoffs, but I think he hurts defenders more than they hurt him. True, true, and I think they've got a decent run home as well, so mm. they they could have the ability to feed him a fair bit. But yeah, if they if they get mm. the opportunity, if they're up in games, they're, they're going to feed him for sure and, and try to get him feed closer to that that two k. Uh, and if you were wondering, Tiki Barber is second on that list for 200-yard rushing games with five, and it's actually a tie at first between Adrian Peterson and OJ Simpson, the juice, with six. Henry very well poised to possibly take that out, uh, given his only five years into his NFL career. Yeah, so he only needs one Definitely. more good year, and he'll have that. So yeah. yeah. Yep. Could have it by the end of the year at this rate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be unreal, uh, and he definitely gets 2K if that yeah, happens. Definitely. Uh, what was our next game there, Jimmy? Yep, so after that we had uh, Los Angeles Raiders at home losing to the Indianapolis Colts 27-44. Yeah, we were concerned about which Raiders would show up here. Yeah. The Colts were really good. Uh, we all tipped 
the yeah. Colts. And the Raiders turn the ball over a lot. Yeah, so, so as you said, three fumbles. Did Carr throw some picks as well? Two picks. Yeah. yeah. So. What did Waller get in this game? Oh, he had a big one. On. Was it this game they had a big one? Because he had a big one yesterday as well. Waller. Because I, I think he... Oh, where am I? I remember I him getting feel... 46 fantasy points, but that actually might have been the week before. He, he did 200 yeah. the week before. One week. Um, so you got 75 yards okay. set off seven receptions. Yeah, not a bad game. But, yeah, it, yeah. Must, it was the week before where, um, yeah, he just went berserk. Mm. And he's probably the only tight end that you could utter in the same sentence as Travis Kelsey at the moment, obviously with Kittle being injured. Yes. Yeah, I was yeah. just trying to – so at the moment – and after the game yesterday, he's at 93 receptions for the year, 967 yards and eight touchdowns. Unreal. So I think Kelsey's already uh, – well, built, built. He's, got, he's got his bag already. He's got a catch. Kelsey's, Kelsey's leading the league for receiving yards, I'm pretty sure, which is insanity as, as a tight end. And with three rounds to go, uh, I'd, if he was to get the receiving um, title, no tight end's ever done that. So – as, yeah. as good as yeah, one thousand two hundred and fifty is what he's on mm-hmm. on the nose. So as, yeah. as good as Tony Gonzalez and um, you know Gronk were at the peak of their powers. Antonio Gates, uh, no one, no tight end has ever led the league for receiving yards. Crazy, yeah, that's insane. <laughs> what was our next game? Yeah, uh, so after that we had Seattle at home beating the New York Jets forty to three. Yeah, not much to talk about here. As nah, expected. No. As expected, we all said Seattle. Uh, I said by 28, they win this one by 37. Yeah. Sean's, uh, Sean said by 100, a little bit in jest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it could have probably been, been 100. Uh, well, well, they sat the first stringers at the end of the third quarter. Mm-hmm. So you got to remember, so Danger Rust didn't play any of the fourth quarter. Um, Gino came, Smith came in and played from the – I think he had two, one or two series in the third quarter. So uh, midway through, yeah, they, they Zeke had didn't play any of the fourth. I don't think, and yep. yeah, they really um, took it easy on them after that. They could have really smoked them. And um, Adam I, Gaze, of course, gets a pay rise, um, doing his job well. <laughs> uh, Taking forever, that is. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, Gaze still has his job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'd think as well. Now three games to go, he probably keeps it for the rest of the year. Oh, that, I think they'll fire him in the off season, bring in the guy that's gonna then lead and um, train up Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. You'll get a nice um, – uh, he's probably got in his contract somewhere there to get a nice bonus if they get the first pick next year. So mm-hmm. you'll get that nice bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and, then they'll, and then they'll sack him and say, yeah, thanks. Thanks for a good job. Um, we now need a real coach. I didn't realise he was offensive coordinator at the Broncos when, when – Peyton was there. So Peyton was there, yeah. Yeah, so on, pa- on uh, Peyton's recommendation, that's how he got the job at the Dolphins. Oh. So, um, yeah – Maybe it was just a very good yes mm. man to Peyton. So yeah. <laughs> Peyton, you run it, and uh, they had pretty handy receiving crews back then as well. That yes, and yes. they had to run the Peyton Manning offense. So, yeah. um, which he'd already done for twenty odd years before then. So. Had a bit of experience. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Omaha, yeah. Omaha. Yeah. Uh, what other games did we have? There's a yep. few. There's a few more to go. So after that, we had Detroit Lions at home losing to the Green Bay Packers, twenty four to thirty one, as expected. They probably did a little bit better so in this game. Yeah, a bit better closer than, game than yeah, what I would have thought. And there was probably a period there with about five minutes to go where it looked like the Lions might actually um, clinch. Didn't clinch they smoke victory? them early and then the Lions kind of got back into this? Yeah, they yeah, did. They so. went out. I think it was like twenty eight to three. Or, or no, 20, um, no, 24 to 3 or something. It was 14 all by half. Time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, we, have no, we have no idea. Well, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> us boys haven't done our research too well. I was watching this game as well, so we're only got that in my head. <laughs> from, I don't know. We just assume they smoked them. <laughs> Lucky we've got the best of the business, Jimmy the uh, Chinaman. You know, it, it was, you know what? It was, I, was, I was thinking of the Bears game, they, it, <laughs> no, which was the week before. I watched that as well. Yeah, they, yeah. they got an early lead out against the Bears. Yes, this was close – Throughout, um, and Rogers had another really nice game, uh, putting his hand up for. And I think Tonya yeah. scored. MVP. Yeah, Robert Tonya. Every Tonyan. in the last three weeks, he's had a touchdown. I think so, and he's got yeah. nine. I think on the year, so breakout year for Robert Tonya. He did get four in one game, so yeah, that tends <laughs> to help. It tends to help. Uh, he's good mates with George Kittle, apparently, and yeah, looking like he'll be off to his first ever Pro Bowl uh, come the end of the season. Uh, Packers also with the Saints. Losing, they mm-hmm. go to the number one mm-hmm. seed yep. uh, in the NFC, and that is massive this year because of the seven-team playoff system. 
the number one seed is the only team that gets the first week off yep. rather than the first two seeds. Yep. So yep. it will be an interesting battle there between the Packers and Saints. So, to see so does two play will, seven then? So yeah, so then yeah. two, pl- two play seven, three and six, four and five. Yeah, yeah. How it works after that, I've got no idea. Yeah. yeah. Because then there's three games the next week as well. In each conference. Yeah, because I assume it's probably then reverse because you wouldn't have the winner of two versus seven play number one. You'd no. have, yeah. yeah, they'd play whoever was the fourth seed, I guess. Yeah, we'll yeah. get ahead around it uh, in the next few weeks and be able to discuss in depth uh, in a few episodes' time as we come into NFL playoffs. Yeah, um, so on the Saints, they were away in Philadelphia losing 21 to 24. Jalen Hurts, Hurts. Uh, the first time yeah. he gets the uh, start, start, the yep. official start. Yep, not he, bad. Seventeen for thirty, one sixty-seven yards. Yeah, uh, it was more He's running really the damage with the legs. Yeah, he had over hundred yep. rushing, rushing yards, and yards Miles well, yep. Sanders went off as well. I guess. He had a huge run. I think uh, he one for eighty run yard. I think there yeah. for Miles Sanders. Um, yep. That Saints defense uh, that we obviously has been a really good defense looked a little bit vulnerable against the run here and yeah probably the upset of the round they played a lot it's probably d- which didn't help because i don't yeah. think Taysom did enough really to maintain possession like he had to throw the ball out on this i think he threw sure. a pick uh, i don't know if they lost the uh, ball fumbling at all but um, it's actually the first time he's had to really throw the yeah. ball a lot and he didn't look that bad he, they they got a lot of he got nearly 300 passing yards they just couldn't really convert it into points mm. uh did you see your boys out for this week? Oh, Mike Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> Look, to be honest, it's a consolation game. I don't really care that much. What's wrong now between uh, fighting and COVID and hamstring. hamstrings? I, I and think it's hamstring again. Dear Lord. Or it's ankle. Has he been the biggest disappointment out of a player this year? Uh, maybe CMC. In, yeah. If, if you're going for a fantasy player, the yeah, number one fantasy. pick playing yep. four four games. Well, I suppose Sa- Saquon ripping his ACL probably hurts, but true. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of a guy that actually, seems he's been actually blue has, the last has played a lot. Yeah, had potential mm-hmm. to be on the field a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty much cost me a spot. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Taking him in the first round. Uh, I did have the ninth pick, and a lot of the good running backs had gone. I think Dalvin Cook was still on the board. Well, if Cook wasn't, Derek uh, Henry was. Cook, I think, was a keeper. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, because, well, I, no, I think Henry went five. So I think by the time you picked. I couldn't, I didn't have a I yeah. think he had the pick of surely, the first surely, surely Peps right. three months ago wasn't that dumb to <laughs> pass on those two guys. <laughs> Given Mike Thomas' season last year, probably didn't seem like the worst choice. Yeah, it doesn't um, help that Drew Brees got hurt as well the last correct, month. Yeah. So There's chat yeah. he might be back soon. He's playing this week. He's sure. his his starting name starter. Yep. That is ridiculous after breaking. 13,000 ribs or whatever it was. Yeah. So, Dawson, don't change your lineup. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope you are listening to this, Dawson. I'd rather you <laughs> win this. <laughs> than, no, fuck you, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to everyone going into uh, NFL Fantasy playoffs this week. What was our That's last it. two games? We had Sunday night and Monday. Two on Monday night, wasn't there? Um, no, so we've still got three more games to go through for Sunday. Oh, my God. I'm all over the Monday. shop today. <laughs> yeah. All over the shop. Yeah, that's all right. We kind we'll of covered two of them, I think, so keep going. Yeah, we have. So um, next up we had Atlanta Falcons um, at LA, Chargers losing 17 to 20. Yeah. Chargers find a way to win in this one, mm-hmm. yep. as they did yesterday as well. So yeah. they're yeah. starting to find winning ways, which would be good Matt for Matt Ryan it. threw three interceptions. Mm-hmm. Unlike um, Matty Alice, turn the ball over like that. Mm. Well, we got, had Bozo in his face, probably didn't help. So, mm-hmm. yeah. True. He's not a great quarterback under pressure, mm-hmm. as we've noticed. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so moving Disappo- on. Di- oh, speaking sorry, of yeah. disappointments, Falcons are pretty disappointing this year. Oh, they've been garbage this Their year. Their defense is shocking. Yeah, horrible. But, yeah, any uh, hard Gur- division to play in. Yeah. Very, uh, very difficult division. Gurley's done nothing for him. Gurley, he's been, yeah, that's probably he's been a little bit, little bit underwhelming. Yeah. yeah. With knee issues, of course. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Moving on. So moving on, we had uh, the 49ers at home losing to the Washington football team, 15 to 23. We all pick, pick the football team here. Picked a lot to run. play for. Yeah. That defense is nasty. Yes. And I think that's probably what kept him in this game because Alex Smith, I don't think, played the second half because uh, mm. he's had had an injury to his calf, mm-hmm. uh, but it's the, it's hit the calf on his bad leg, like the leg that's had a lot of 
um, surgeries on it. So uh, took a lot of yeah. precautions. Um, he seemed to be moving around to Orion sidelines. Um, was there for basically the whole game, but he just didn't play. What is so, it his bad leg? Yeah. yeah. It was his cuff on his bad leg. Okay. Um, so Haskins played the rest of that game. I think they're 50-50 yep. on whether he's playing this week. Right. Because, um, yeah, whether they go with Haskins or whether they'll play Alex Smith. Um, is Kyle Allen still out? Yes, I think Kyle Allen's done for the year. He broke his leg. Oh, ACL. One of the two, or something in something that knee-related knee area. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think Allen's done for the year. Right. So it'll be it'll either be Haskins, who who started the year as the starter mm-hmm. and then lost his job to the subsequent yep. two quarterbacks we just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Alex Smith will maybe get the run here, or they might rest him a week. They, they kind of can't though, because they really need to win. Mm. Um, mm. So, but we'll talk yeah. more about that. Who they're facing this week when we get to it. Mm-hmm. That's it. But that's really the only big story that came out of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, otherwise, Chase Young had an awesome day. So, yeah. could be defensive rookie of the year with mm-hmm. um, the stats he's putting up at the moment. I'd say probably we'll get that. Yep. Not bad for a number two pick. Yeah. Mm. Um, so after that, we had. Buffalo Bills at home beating the Pittsburgh Steelers 26 to 15. We all went Buffalo here. Uh, Steelers, after going 11 0, have lost two on the trot. Yeah. We were yep. speculating last week that maybe, uh, you know, through ease of schedule and that, they m- not that good a team. Maybe but inflated a little bit. Yeah. They still yeah. were competitive in this game. Their defense yep. is going to keep them in them. Mm-hmm. I think their defense is starting to get a little banged up. So, mm. so yeah. I have to see how they go. And they, running the ball's been a really big issue for the yeah. Steelers as well. Well, they had no Connor. I think Connor didn't play in this one either. Yeah. But no, he, he, he did play, play. Oh, he He's had play? ten carries for eighteen yeah. yards. But still, still, still getting, out, yeah. still getting back from his yeah. COVID. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So they only had forty-seven yards rushing. Yeah. For the day, so yeah. don't I don't many. think Ross Berger had a good day either. Um, Juju was very quiet. No, in this. yeah. Threw two interceptions. Mm-hmm. Um, so 27, 187 yards. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. They had like 230 yards of total offense. Yeah. Don't win too many games when you Bad put day. up those numbers. No. Mm. Not when Josh Allen threw for 238. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's been good. Has been. And, then, and then, of course, the last game, the game yep, of the week. So Monday night, game of the week. So <laughs> Cleveland Browns at home losing to the Baltimore Ravens 42-47. to 47. Forget about game of the week. This is just about game of the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it has been touted as game of the year. So, <laughs> did you see the last five minutes? Yeah. It was like, I'm pretty sure it was like 28 all or something with about five minutes to go. And then it was just touchdown, touchdown, <laughs> touchdown, <laughs> touchdown. End to end stuff. Oh, definitely. unreal. Yeah. So in the third quarter, Cleveland scored, th- sorry, fourth quarter, Cleveland scored 22 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, Baltimore scored 13 points. Yeah. But um, had a big lead going but, into that at the mm, point. Yeah, had a huge lead going into the fourth quarter. Yeah. And the, in the dog pound, the atmosphere was going absolutely crazy. The, I think they were at about 30% capacity or something like that. It was actually loud. <laughs> it's good to hear um, a loud football stadium. Uh, Lamar gets hurt, or he has cramps, actually, and he, he goes well, off. Cramps, or did he need to do a big poo poo? Maybe. <laughs> well, that's the joke. Some food poisoning himself. Yeah, he had to, do, uh, had to relieve himself. <laughs> But it, it looked like he wouldn't play out the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, who was it? Was it Tracy something? Yeah, Trace, Trace McSorley. McSorley. Yeah, McSorley. Yeah. Uh, looks like he he's done for the year, so I think he did his ACL. <laughs> poor fella. Yeah, poor fella. And then they're like, well, who's our backup quarterback? Because I don't think they had anyone else. Yeah. RG3, of course, was hurt the week before. Yep. yep. So um, Lam- Lamar puts on his Superman cape, yeah. runs back out. Yeah. Wipes himself off, and there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on that... Uh, and he looked good. Like, was it, it, that, it was the first play that he was back, wasn't it? Because yeah. it was a third down play where McSorley yeah. gets hurt and Lamar comes back on on fourth and five, rolls out to the right. You go, oh, he's going to run the, for the first down. Nope. nope. Hollywood, Hollywood Browns Brown. wide open. Toss, to- yeah. Tosses in the pigskin. <laughs> they score. And then I think Cleveland score again after that and then Lamar has to take him, yeah, take back him down at the score. end. And then the game ends on a weird safety, which is because it was 45-42. Yeah, well, Tucker hits the 55-yard um, field goal to take the lead. Yep. yep so yep. automatic from him. And then, yeah, then Cleveland. Yep. I think they're, they're doing some schoolyard bullshit. Yeah, they went yeah. back about 40 yards yep. uh, with about 10, 12 laterals. And, yeah, it ends <laughs> on a safety. So. You know what would be interesting here? Some sort of rugby league type. Yeah, if these guys knew how to pl- like throw like lateral, that. They, yeah, they, they just don't Dr- draw and pass. None of them have played rugby. So. Every every Australian that follows the NFL always thinks about this. Yeah, yeah. yeah yep. it, obviously it's it's yeah. its own game. It, it 
The, but if you had, if you played like some touch footy before training, yeah, you could, you, you'd know. Get a bit of that draw yeah. and pass, draw, and, exactly, and, and a, mismatch, a wrap around, and then they'd be like mind blown. Like, yeah, a little bit yeah. of a mismatch if Hollywood Brown's getting the ball, and you know, you're drawing and passing in front of a defensive tackle. Yeah. Anyway, it's a little bit of food for thought. Yeah. It's uh, been done to death, I'm sure, in Australia. <laughs> just why don't they just play like rugby? Man? Yeah. It's because they've never done it. That's the reason. Mm. You do uh, sometimes on yeah on a kick return or on a um on a defensive touch to like a you know you might see a few laterals and but yeah the the concepts of cut out balls and wrap arounds and yeah. drawing yeah. passes. Yeah, well, you, none of they all threw the, you know the like the alley oop kind of pass. They yeah, had hands yeah. like thrown around. Mm-hmm. None of them you know two hands on the ball passing it sideways. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. they just have, don't have that concept of throwing mm. like a torpedo it, ball or anything like mm. that. Is the concept of passing it, is it the shoulder pads or wearing the helmet? Nah. You could you could you, Well the quarter it's the quarter it's a toss. It's a toss a sweep play. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a but all the, that's all, not a tight spiral rugby league, you know, bullet out from the out from the hookup. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's no, none of them have done torpedo pass or done like a nine just, to five you just pass, need a, nine to mm, six pass like just get the offload going. Yeah. Well, that's all they really do is mm, like the yeah. you know the pitch or the, the throw. The, mm. Yeah, none of them, not a single. If you watch all those laterals, not a single one of them threw it with two hands. Like yeah, two and yeah. half of them don't hit their targets or nah. yeah. anyway. Yeah. But food, again, food they don't thought. play like that. They don't practice it. <laughs> yeah, and it only comes out when you're trying to do yeah. something. Maybe if, like maybe if they've got an Australian punter out there and, uh, <laughs> you know. Like if most, of the Australian, punt, most of the Australian punters start handballing the thing. Probably true, yeah. <laughs> the AFL players, but yeah. <laughs> but they've probably, you know, those boys have probably played some schoolyard bullshit some yeah. touch footy in their days. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. For sure. Anyways. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. In, <laughs> um, interesting finish to a heck of a game. Yeah. Yep. So the last thing, did you guys see Trent Brown's um, face mask from I, this? I don't think I saw this. No. What happened? Do you want to just Google it real quick? I oh, know, just the the design. Uh, see if you can get a picture of it. Um, so I think it, well, I think it was last week's game when they played the Colts, but it could have been this week. This week's game, yeah. To get clear, just the first one. Can you see what he's got in his face cage? So this is Trent Brown from the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. Fist. Yeah. Ah. Well, well, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, better. So special made. Fa- so it's actually the design of the yeah. face cage. So, so the fa- the face cage yeah. is so it's uh, a fist for, for Black Lives well, Matters. Exactly, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, cool. That's, I thought the league kind of clamped down on this after Ray Lewis had like a thousand bars in his face cage, and they're like, hey, you got to use some yeah. Uh, manufactured I thought you ones. could only have a special grill if it was like for a medical yeah a medical exemption. Yeah. But, but if you're protesting, you're allowed to do anything. Yeah, you, you can't say no to that. <laughs> no, I don't, and that's I don't, as far as I'm going to go on that very touchy subject. Yeah, I don't think yeah. uh, Roger Goodell is going to come after him at all for this. Um, no, no. Because, uh, uh, yes, he, like you say, that he probably doesn't want to touch it. But it's, I think it's cool. Like, I thought it was it's awesome. It's a mm. cool sentiment. It does open up a, what are the rule, a the rules. rabbit hole to mm. what are the rules, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But can you imagine but you're playing cool. offensive line and you're lining up, you've got blokes wearing... He's probably got like a With black fi- f- yeah, face like visor, and yeah, the blackout visor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's got a massive like fist just ready, and he's just getting it pounded in the mouth. Like, yeah. he's a mean <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, yeah, he's a big dude, yeah. Trent Brown. Mm-hmm. That is very cool. So that wraps up uh, week. Uh, f- what was that? Week that was fourteen. Week 14. 14. So, yeah, started week, week fifteen. 15. So yeah. the Chargers beat uh, the Raiders in overtime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Again, figure out how to get a win for a change. Um, mm. Bit of a back and forth game. What was the score one? in that, Monks? It ended up being pretty high scoring, didn't yes, it? Yes, going yeah. into overtime, it was uh, Chargers 30, Raiders yeah, 27. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Any standouts? Um, I well, completely missed this game yesterday. So Carr injures, he's, pulls his yes. groin mm-hmm. and it looks like he's yep. going to be out a couple of weeks. Right. Did that Who's in, their backup? Uh, Mariota. Ah, oh, he's back. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, they showed him warming up on the sidelines, and I was like, "Who's this old bloke?" Because he's got he's got the greys on the side <laughs> You're now. You're joking? And then I was he's like, not oh. that old." Uh, no, he's not. But he's got he, you know he's got black hair and he's got the greys now around the yeah. side. Good looking like, bloke, Marcus Mariota. Yeah. He'll be rocking that. Like, and I was like, "Oh, it's Mariota." Yeah. And I was like, oh, we'll Imagine there's goes. some George Clooney, Salt and Pepper vibes yeah, there. Yeah. Not, uh, not a bad football player as well. It's yeah, had yeah. a good 17 game. Seventeen for twenty eight, two hundred and twenty six yards, one touchdown, one interception. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then also ran the ball nine times for eighty-eight yards. Boom! Which you're not getting out of car. Like he, that's no, not, not, no. His, not his mo very much. Yeah, well, that yeah. a massive game for him. So guys might be looking. Yeah, got, felt, yeah, well, yeah. That's. I mean, he's playing for his job. He mm-hmm. was the second pick in the 2015 draft. Yeah, after Winston. Uh, 
Yes. Yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah. Quarterbacks yeah. one and two. Good yeah. recollection there. And he won the Heisman, didn't he? Mm, Mariota. No, I don't think he. Did. Or am I am I making things up? No. Little you check did, there. Did you remind me that that Ravens Browns game was the first time on Monday night that a Heisman two Heisman winners playing quarterback playing against each other? There you go. Because mm. because I think Lamar. So Baker was the year after Lamar. Uh huh. So I think. Baker was 18 and Lamar – no, that can't be right. 18 – 17 for Baker and 16 for Lamar. Hmm. Let's get a list of Heisman trophies with him, <laughs> perhaps. Mm. Or maybe it was 18, 17. Okay, but anyway. It so, was also the first time the Browns won a Monday Night Football in like yeah. 23 years or something. Yeah. Uh, it would have been. <laughs> yeah, if they'd like. <laughs> yes. yeah. But it's the first time they've been on Monday Night Football. In a long time. In a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so who's your Heisman, Heisman winners? Runners – yeah, I'm trying through, to find the list. Because I, I don't think they've decided on this year's one. I'm not sure if they're actually going to do one this year. No, I think there is going to be one okay. this year, yeah. It's the uh, Bama quarterbacks are favourite for that. Yeah, he's had a pretty good year too, yeah. replacing Tua. And no one's talking about, uh, maybe won't be eligible for the draft yeah. next year. They've got one of their, I don't know who he is, I just saw a note of one of the Alabama um, wide receivers has had an unreal year as well, but uh-huh. probably helps when your quarterbacks have an unreal year, real, unreal year as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Come closer to the date, we'll discuss all the draft prospects for mm-hmm. next year. Mm-hmm. I've, I've yeah. heard it's an, going to be a, another stacked receiving core. Yeah, they're pumping out receivers yeah. left, right, and center of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're slowly starting to see a few players starting to elect to go into the draft as well. So yeah, definitely, definitely movement there. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Heisman winners go. Yep. So Mariota did win it in yeah. 2014. There you go. Boom. Um, you made me second guess myself. Yeah. <laughs> so who was? So it runs through for the last, last six, six years. Yeah. 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 So um, Mariota was 14. Just trying to figure out how this list goes. So after him, Derek Henry, 2015. Yeah. King Jackson, uh, 16. So you're right. Yeah. So yeah. Jackson before Baker. Yeah. And then yep. Baker would have been 17. So Lamar played another year after yes. he would won the Heisman. Yeah. Yep. At Louisville. Yeah, mm-hmm. on that as well. Winston in 2013 was the winner. Uh-huh. So James Winston, yeah. 2013. From Florida State? Yep. Florida State. And then Mariota, and then they both um, entered the NFL in 2015. And went mm-hmm. one and two, and uh, both backup yep. slash. I mean, well, no, Winston's a backup as well, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. 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 Saints. Um, so then, yeah, May- Baker Mayfield, 17. Mm-hmm. Kyler Murray, 18. Mm-hmm. Joe Burrow, 19. 19. Yep. And then 2020 to be uh, awarded to be shortly. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On this. The list has either a f- football headshot or some sort of runway sort of headshot. Mm-hmm. For Johnny Manziel in 2012, it looks like his is just a mug shot. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's probably gone through an edit and like, changed it to his mug shot. Johnny football. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. He also played for the Browns, so yeah. Yeah. Mm. I wonder how much it's was his uh, talent and was Browns management. Obviously, some off-the-field issues came into – Play yeah, with Johnny, it, but yeah. you, you yeah. Know, the amount of quarterbacks that have gone to Cleveland to die. Oh, it's sad. It's a huge it? list. Mm. So, yeah. it's, so it's great to see. Good. Great to see Baker doing well this year, yep. and the Browns yeah. will be playing playoff football regardless. You'd think having yep. a bit of fun with it mm. as well. Mm-hmm. So the finish off so. that Raiders and Chargers chat. So Chargers kick a field goal in overtime to win it. I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they won three in a row now. The Los Angeles Chargers, mm-hmm. and that's their fifth win of the year, I think. So, uh, yeah, yeah, the one yeah. game behind Denver. So it won't well, be play- no, we draw with Denver at the moment. So it won't be playing playoff football, but obviously a uh, much more respectable season. Uh, and yeah, yeah, Justin Herbert back from injury. Oh yeah, they found a quarterback in Herbert, so that's mm-hmm. that's where you mm-hmm. can build around next year. Mm-hmm. And I think they were pretty banged up in this too. Eckler and uh, Allen didn't do too much mm-hmm. on a bit mm-hmm. of a rep count, mm-hmm. um, which to Pappy's dismay. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the Chargers are one game behind Denver, so yeah. the Denver's five and eight. Uh, Chargers are five and nine. Yep, yep, yep. They'll probably be on the same after Buffalo. <laughs> you could, you would think. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, in a rare occurrence, we've got some games happening tomorrow. Oh yes, um, yeah, I think the Saturday time, games. This time yeah. of the year, that when the college football starts quieting down, I think they do do some Saturday night games. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. yeah. In the past. So there's a two, um, two games tomorrow. What's yep. the first one? So the first one we have Denver uh, and Buffalo. Yep, Denver and Buffalo at Denver. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Denver and Buffalo at Denver. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you'd think 
Buffalo. You, you think Buffalo, but we've been saying this for the last three weeks. <laughs> they won all of those. <laughs> yes. yes. What, so you're saying... Uh, yes, so we're backing Buffalo. Okay. Sean doesn't want to jinx it. <laughs> he thinks they're a legitimate chance. That 5%, 5% chance of making the playoffs yeah. is still... Uh, in his head here. <laughs> I, I heard Von, Von Miller was running around the other day. So You're joking. Really? Yeah, I think he'd be – he's starting training again. I think that was always um, his time frame was he could be back towards the end of the season or for playoffs if he made it. Did, when did he tear his ACL? In June? Uh, a week before the season started. So I August. Think. How the hell have they got him back? I think – yeah, no, or it was uh, – no, it wouldn't have been August. It would have been – Somewhere in July. July. I, th- yeah. I feel like it was at the summer training camp. Like a yeah, it, it happened. It was it was the last day of training camp. Oh. So I think it was the end of July. So like, yeah. and it was like an, a nothing thing. But I don't. It well, no, he didn't do ACL. It was um, something. It was ankle. So it was that thing. Oh, the this one. <laughs> so so <laughs> uh, we don't have any video. So that's making some for some good listening. <laughs> Uh, high ankle sprain no, or so the, the, syndesmosis. So that tendon that wraps around the bottom of your ankle there, uh-huh. it's it's a dislocation. So it's popped out. Right. So, what so they, they, back they do, to my attempted physio degree, that's a tibialis posterior tendon. Yeah, which yeah. Yeah. So, so I think his surgery is they go in, they clean up that groove, mm-hmm. so make it probably a bit deeper yep. so they won't pop out again. Right. And then they put the tendon back in there. But, of course, he's got to let it all heal back up, etc. Very unusual. But it's, it's something. Injury. That they can have a pretty quick recovery on. It. Okay, so that's why he's coming back. But yes, here I was oh. thinking this whole year that he was at, miss, out, out yeah. with an ACL. Yeah, that makes sense. Sutton's out with the ACL. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so he he's definitely cost not playing this week. I don't think he'll play this year because probably what's the sa- point? What's the point? Yeah, yeah. save yeah. him. Yeah, um, I did see it earlier on in the week. Did you see what he did with his surgery scar? I um, have not. No, I'll bring this up on the TV. Did he put a chicken on it? Not a chicken. Tattoo? Yep, tattoo. Yeah. He's put the Joker face on Oh, <laughs> that is cool. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. So as I was saying how this, this tendon runs down and under around the ankle, mm-hmm. so that's the mouth of the Joker, and then he's put the Joker's two eyes above it. So it makes it look like, have you seen, you know, his big smiley face is his scar. That's a pretty yeah. cool thing to do with a scar. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when was that? December. So, yeah. so yeah. just, just, I just recently, just but like this yeah. week yeah. in the news, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can see that scar is fully healed there, so mm-hmm. it does look a little bit swollen. Um, but of course, he getting back into match shape. Of course, started a bit of running around. Uh, don't th- he maybe plays the last game of this year? If that, they're probably rest again. Him. I'd say rest. What's him. the point? Yeah, some great yeah. insights there, Doctor Gould and Doctor Webster. <laughs> I'm just talking, I'm just keen about the tattoo. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> sick tattoo and a really uh, clever thing to do there with a pretty gnarly scar. Yep. Um, so moving on, we've got the next Saturday game, Sunday for us. Mm-hmm. Green Bay Packers at home for um, Carolina. Carolina Panthers. Yeah. I think the Packers do this pretty comfortably. Yeah. I think um, yeah. Panthers can score some points, so mm-hmm. maybe this is an overs depending what it is. The Panthers have been better than their record suggests. Yeah. Um, I've been pretty impressed with Teddy. Uh, I had my doubts at the start of the year. Obviously, they're not winning a, a yeah. heap of games. They're hurting because they're missing CMC. They're but missing CMC a bunch. Still... Their defense isn't that great. Yeah. Uh, but Teddy's been going good, and his um, CMC's mm-hmm. backup, Mike Davis, obviously had himself a really nice year. Mm-hmm. He'd um, be on a little bit more money when his contract runs out. Um, oh, and it is three o'clock. <laughs> so the test, it's twelve. What's going on here? It's twelve past three. We've we've missed we've missed the first few overs. Getting too stuck in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Can go down the NFL uh, rabbit yeah. warren. Uh, so on your point, yeah, I think Panthers are better than their record. They they really need CMC, of course, to help carry that team a little bit. Yep. yep. Of course, he's out. Um, don't think he's playing this week. He may be back next week, but mm-hmm. at this point, like we've been saying, maybe it's not worth it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get a guy back to play. Week 17, when you're not playing playoffs, what is the point? Yeah. Uh, so we've Ooh, got the another cr- wicket. Cricket. Oh, two for 15. Game on here. The win viz has India at 52% and Australia at 42%. Uh, but who- Coley is not out there. That is very strange. Someone get a scoreboard. I, I can get the scoreboard up. Yep. Yeah. Uh, see, see what's happening here as Stark's bowling some thunderbolts at Agarwal. So he must have only just got that wicket too, by the way. And wasn't Starkey, so um, either was Hazelwood 
Oh, so, so uh, Boomer Bo- got out. Boomer, Bo- 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 uh, we're stupid. Bo- yeah, I knew Boomer Bo- Bo- was a night watchman, so yeah. yeah. Uh, but I thought Kylie was three, or does he bat four? He bats four. Okay, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Sorry. Pujara, three. Uh, yeah, Bumra caught and bowled Cummins, so Cummins has the yeah. first two. Uh, India, yep. two for 15. Uh, still got, yeah, a guy called Kohli to come in, and yes. Yes. the brick wall Pujara is out there at the moment. And mind you, this other wall's got a good test record. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's only played about nine tests. I think he's already made four tonnes. He's averaging 57. So... He's no slouch either. Would have been perfect if he got out right at that point. Perfect. <laughs> the curse of the commentator. I don't mind. I'll, I'll give them all raps if they get out straight away. <laughs> we digress. We go back over to... Uh, so we covered Saturday. So Sunday. Yes. Yep. Sunday's games. So back across the Pacific. Big, so, big Sunday. Yeah. So first up, we've got uh, Atlanta at home hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa, you'd think. Bucks Even in. without a running game, yeah. I'd Bucks, Bucks. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a lot of points in this one. Yeah, you'd think yeah. so, but... Uh, Bucks, Bucks D has yeah. been showing up. Well, I think we've said that for every Falcons game in the last month and they and haven't that, scored, they many, haven't points, scored so, many points. So maybe uh, avoid the line in this one. And I'll tell you what, the Bucks uh, defense is number one against the run. We've yep. been sp- spoken about girly struggles, Edo Smith, bad offensive line. Yeah, I don't know if you can bet unders on total rushing yards, but I can't imagine <laughs> the Falcons do too much. Uh, also, Brian Hill, I think, is their number one. Brian Hill, yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. But yeah, I don't think yep. he's doing overly too much. No, and uh, especially if the Bucks get out to an early lead, they might just have to pass the ball. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'll go Tampa Bay there. Yeah, I yeah. think I think the number one run defense is probably um, a little bit of a, a cover because I think they get passed on a lot. So. And, yeah, <laughs> and they they. Uh, Secondaries, obviously, they've got Anton Winfield Jr., the rookie. He's having himself a pretty nice year. Mm. Carlton Davis and who's the other corner? Murphy Bunting, I think. Um, and Jordan Whitehead, I believe, makes up their secondary. No big names there and a lot no. of youth. A lot. Yeah. They're, they're really quite young. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll say Tampa Bay win this. And if they want to be treated like an actual Super Bowl contender, which on paper yeah. that you'd think they are, uh, they got to put away teams like the Falcons. Yeah, they should be the Falcons. Definitely. Next definitely. one. So after that, we've got Dallas hosting uh, San Fran. Yeah, so San Fran's loss. Uh, they can still make the playoffs. They'd have to win out. Uh, so a lot to play for. Dallas but, also in the same position. Mm-hmm. Probably need to win most of their games to compete with the Giants and Washington. They're a game back, I believe, yep. when we looked at it. Mm-hmm. Um Definitely got some talent. If Andy Dalton's there and can play, they can definitely win games. I think I'd pick them in this one. Though the Niners' defense is getting healthier and being yeah. better. Yeah. Um, they're um they're two dollars forty here, uh, Dallas at home. I don't mind that. Yeah, that's although that's they have been bad. pretty poop this year. <laughs> yes, yes, and Zeke's still struggling with that calf injury, but mm-hmm. Pollard's been pretty good too. So yeah, massive game with uh, playoff ramica- ramifications. Mm-hmm. Both teams. I think it'll be close. It's yeah. must win. That that term gets thrown around, but this is a must win for yeah. both games. I think this, uh, both teams this will be probably teams, a very yeah. similar game to the Washington Niners last week, whereas yeah. that 23-15. Yep. Yeah, l- low scoring. It'll be in that, yeah. I think it'll be that, you know, 20 to 24 to, you know, that 15 to 18 kind of range. Like, yeah. It's going to be close. Yeah, I wouldn't be putting any money on this myself. Personally, I'll say Dallas win this just. If Dallas stays on this form... What do you reckon this means for Prescott next season? I think um, they've already said they're going to keep him. Keep him? Yeah, Jones has kind of come out and said, you know, Dax our quarterback. Yeah. Mm. Have they paid him yet? Because no. I don't know. No, they haven't paid At him. the start of the year, he was after a massive contract. So I think yep. they're going to pay him a massive contract, mm. but whether it's got some interesting language in it or there's a maybe a little bit of discount next year and it's back-ended. Mm. Um, I think, if anything, mm. this season him being out – has increased his stock because yeah. you see how bad they've been definitely without and especially their, their offense yeah. just going from one of the best offenses. Yeah, they'll score forty points plus. Yeah. Have had to score forty points mm-hmm. plus, but they've gone the from f- that to first few weeks this year and 20. all of last year, Dak just absolutely throwing up some huge uh passing yard numbers. Which helps set a great time. start of the he, season. He's probably yeah. sitting back there going, Oh, you guys gotta pay me now. <laughs> um and yeah, the quarterback carousel uh, that they've had this year, mostly due to injury. Mm. Uh, it's probably a good thing for Dak's argument to get paid a lot of money. Yeah, they'll keep okay. him. Yep. Um, so moving on from there, we will have uh, the Tennessee Titans hosting 
Detroit Lions. Should be Tennessee. Yeah, mm. Titans. You'd think so. Sure. Yeah. Lions got a bad defense, so Henry for 200. <laughs> Do you want me to let, I'll let you know what he's uh, Can you bet overs for rushing? <laughs> well, you can for on an on a individual. I think his average at the moment is 140. No. So. That's craziness. Yeah. Helps um, when you have a bunch of 200 plus games. <laughs> don't have he's averaging 117 odd. Ah, oh, there you go. Yep. Don't have the market here from our friends at Sportsbet. Mm. Fix it up, Hammy Goodman. Fix it up. <laughs> Fix it up. Uh, yeah. Titans uh, by a lot. Titans, yeah. By Titans lot. by a lot. Yep. Uh, Titans by a bit, I'll say. I think Detroit. Uh, Stafford's not playing. So, oh, yeah. Case Daniel's going to be the quarterback. Yes. He, actually, he is, broke his. That, we forgot to cover big, that, actually. He broke his big ribs big, yeah. in that the end of that uh, Packers game. Yeah. Uh, was actually. He left the field. Looks like he was done for the day. And then he was back on the sideline. Uh, he's tough as they come oh, uh, yeah. in quarterbacks. So, yeah, he's done for the year, I believe. And I think rumours are they might be moving on from him as well. That could season. be the end for him in Detroit. And mm. they might have a top 10 draft pick next year yeah. in a pretty heavy quarterback draft. Mm-hmm. You'd say mm. Lawrence and Justin Fields will be unavailable to them, but yeah. then there's... I think there's Wilson. Is it a Wilson? Well, there's that... Um, Who's the Travis guy? Trey. Trey, Trey Trey Vance, I think. Yeah, Trey, yeah. He's uh, mm. at North Dakota State, which is Carson Wentz's uh, yeah. al- alma mater, right. I believe. Yeah, I think he's it's about three or four. Yeah. I think have snuck into that yeah. conversation. Mm-hmm. Top ten. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um. Anyways, we can cover that in the NFL off season. Yeah. Yeah. Stanford's uh, what thirty five. Stafford, yeah. He's that actually. Is, I keep I keep saying Stanford. Yeah. Stafford. Yeah. I think he's younger than we'd think, but he's up there. He's actually. Can you just Google him? He was a number one overall draft pick for the Lions. From Georgia? Uh, a long yeah, time at, ago, though. And for, for a team that's not really done anything with, uh, him, there with him there. That's not so bad, actually. 32. Yeah, he's young. Uh, he, he's a pretty good quarterback. Like, his numbers yeah. his numbers have always been good. got to remember, he played with Megatron, too. So yeah. That, you know, mm-hmm. that is he's true. been retired four or five years. Like yeah, this. a real, real sad thing, Megatron retiring as young as he did. It's the Lions, man. Yeah. Barry Sanders, retired young. Yep. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens there if yeah. they want to part ways with him. I think he's been a reasonable quarterback in a pretty ordinary system. Yeah. I th- yeah. If he he's, makes it to free agency, he's probably the top quarterback in free agency. At the oh, moment. yeah. There's there'd no, be a bunch of guys yeah. that would love yeah. to pick him up. But They're I think. Definitely a team looking for a starter. I think, because um, when I looked into this um, with Wentz as well, for him and Wentz both have like 50 mil in dead cap at the end of this year. So right. mm. trades more likely than cuts, but. They're not going to cut him. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't think they can. So they no. can't get rid of him no. contract wise. So it, it, yeah, it'd have to be trade. Maybe they should just swap, yeah. swap with Philly. <laughs> well, Philly, <laughs> they might be happy with Hertz. So. They are, yeah. I think, yeah. From yeah. from what I've seen, I, I, and I'd probably take um, Stafford over um, Wentz. Wentz at this point after Agreed. this year. Yep. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what's our next game here? Yep. So after that, we have Indianapolis at home to Houston. Indy. Indy dollar twenty seven here. Yeah. Yep. Actually, Rivers is off contract as well. I think he's only signed a one year deal with um, the Colts. Okay. So he's the top quarterback. Yeah, technically on the uh, market okay. next mm-hmm, year, mm-hmm. but also the oldest quarterback on the market. <laughs> uh, yes, with Brady being contracted for next year. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, yeah, um, I think Indy win this pretty comfortably. Yep. Okay. Um, next up, we have Miami at home f- hosting New England Patriots. Huge game in terms of playoff ramifications. Uh, the Patriots must win. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dolphins, if they win, it looks like they will. Play playoff football. Yep. Could go either way for mine. I, I'm going to go Miami. I, I think Dolphins have been better. Yeah. Compared to what New England's put up in the last two weeks. I think that 40, yep. well, that 45 nil sm- smashing. smashing of the Chargers, I think, isn't really indicative of the way yeah. they're playing. Well, I th- they didn't. What did they do last week? They they, lo- they lost. To, so they're coming off the 10 day break because uh, yeah. they lost Thursday night football ah. against the Rams where they did nothing. They did nothing. Their yeah. offense is horrendous. Like really bad. I wonder mm. if Stidham's going to start for him this week. Good question. That yeah, I've actually heard because yeah, he in that Rams game ha- took snaps. Yeah, and it, I think it, I don't think Cam was hurt. Nah, they they sat Cam, um, mm. but whether they're going to sit him at all, see maybe what they got in Stidham. 
Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Stidham didn't look too bad, but he was playing in garbage time, of course. Yep. Um, yep. Against a pretty good Rams defense. So uh, the bookies got this pretty close. They got uh, the Finns at a dollar eighty-five, Patriots at dollar ninety-eight. Love how they're both under two dollars. A little bit of robbery if anything to come out of that. It should be save your money. Um, mm. I personally, I really like the Finns at, yeah, the, like the at Finns that too. price. Mm. I think the Finns should get a win here, and the they should. Bookies are also thinking no points to be scored in this. The over unders is forty-one and a half. That's just about as low as they go. Yeah, I think well, I, I I reckon the Finns can probably score some points. Yeah, this I, I don't, don't I don't think New England maybe can't keep. Yeah, I don't think this would be. I, again, I, I'm not probably touching this game with my own money. Uh, that line is just about as low as they go. If you want to go overs, but yeah, I don't see there being many points scored in this. Yeah. No. Next one. Moving on. Yep. So moving on, we've got Minnesota Vikings hosting Chicago Bears. Can the Bears still make the playoffs? So the Vikings beat the Bears, I think, about a month ago. Mm-hmm. The Bears are only got six wins now, don't they? But I think... Yep, oh Bears six Who was their quarterback? Um, Foles was a quarterback back then. Mm-hmm. So Jabriskie's back there. So Mitch, of course, is playing for his future. Mm-hmm. Whether he w- wants it a bit more. Don't know. Just can't back that Bears offense. But nah. they then put... 30 points on Houston. And I yeah. thought Houston and Minnesota are pretty similar. Yeah, I thought so too. The outfit. Vikings defense, not like they used to be. Yeah. Uh, Vikings actually dollar 60 favorites in this game. Uh, I, think, I think, you know, Dalvin Cook, of course, going to carry the team. Mm. They've, got, mm. they've got a pretty good receiving core. So they've probably got more talent than, say, Houston does at the moment mm-hmm. on offense. Mm-hmm. So they're going to score some points. Bears D played pretty well last week, first game. They've kind mm. of played really well in, say, a month. Um, this could go either way, I reckon. Yeah, it's going to be close. Definitely. Uh, mm. I'm not touching this game yeah, I wouldn't get with, near with my own money. Um, if go, I'm back in Vikes just for my boy Jefferson. but Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to go the Vikings too, only because I, we got a pick, but I think this is a lot closer than that uh, spread yeah, there. Coin, coin toss this one. Mm-hmm. Mm. So next up <gasps> we've got... Oh, Ooh, we've got a wicket. Breaking news. Pat Cummins has three. And gets a very dangerous man in Pujara. Uh, For a he, duck. Yeah, Pujara. Quackity quack, oh. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's fired up about it. <laughs> the wall. Replay's playing now, thanks to our friends at KO. Just a length ball. Makes him play. Probably hitting top of off. Schnicks up high on that outside edge. Straight through to Tim Payne. India. In all sorts. Three for 15. And oh, well. we have got a game on now. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're in all sorts yet. Because Coley's coming out. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Coley's Get coming Coley out. Get Coley and then then I think we're definitely in with a big chance. Big time, big time. This is going to be a thrilling afternoon and can't wait to... Cummins got all three in this inning. Too, yeah, probably. yeah. Cummins got three for eight uh, off his first five overs. Pretty good out that's of the number one that's ranked tidy. test bowler. And uh, yeah, the King Coley comes out to the crease batting five uh, because Boomer obviously being the night watchman. Uh yeah, enthralling test match on our hands. Coming back to the NFL, we next game. I think the last of the early windows is it, James? Uh, no, there's two more. So we have Washington at Seattle. Oh, I am saying Seattle because I think Haskins going to play. So the I football team is three dollars fifty in this. I think that's value. That's, I, not, that's not too bad. Like, I don't. That's worth a tenner. I think Seattle. <laughs> I do think Seattle wins this, but. I think that's real juicy value in Washington. Yeah. And obviously yeah. the Seahawks dropped a game against the Giants at home two weeks ago and they've played the Jets like, yeah, yeah. always hard. Off Good bounce back for them, mm. but yeah. yeah. I think Seattle win this, but I don't mind Washington as a smoky. Yeah, I think Danger Russ is probably going to throw 40 times in this because Washington, yeah. their strength in the defense course is the front seven, not mm-hmm. their secondary. So um, I think that's where he'll try to target and go after him, but. Yeah. Good matchup. It's good, a good matchup. Good matchup. Yeah, I think the mm. Seahawks mm. should win this. They should. should. And should. if they're serious about going deep this year, again, they have to same as the Bucks, they're sort of a team that has probably played a little bit under their potential. Uh, need to be put in away teams like Washington. Yeah. Yep. Alex Smith is healthy and plays in this. Different story. Ooh, different story. Mm-hmm. And, uh, still can't see them Reckon? winning. Because I, I think Gibson's still hurt. I so. can't see them winning. All right. But. 
Just a couple, t- a couple turnovers. That's all they need out of Danger Russ from True. that defense. And, and running the ball. If they can run the ball down their throat. Yeah. Um, what about your clock? Gibson, your, he's still Is he back still, or he's still out? I think out. he's still out this week. See they, who, and they, they've just picked up Lamar Miller, which kind of probably doesn't give you much hasn't confidence. Hasn't played much football recently. Yeah. They're going to go with JD and um, Peyton Barber. Mm-hmm, That'll mm-hmm. be probably their main two. But Hard to see him winning. Yeah, yeah, given that they don't have this, their preferred quarterback and their starting running back available. Again, I, I wouldn't be putting money on Seattle at $1.30. That's all nah. I can say. Nah, it's not worth it. Mm. Maybe a sneaky on Washington. If Alex Smith plays, I'd put a sneaky tanner on. Seahawks <laughs> win, trap game. <laughs> yeah, trap game. All right. Next one. Moving on. So we've got Baltimore at home hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars. Baltimore should smoke these guys. Yeah, the Jags are bad. If, if they play as, mm. I think. Um, Ravens have really hit their straps in the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. They should yeah. hopefully they need to continue, of course, if they want to play in the playoffs. Um, I think they have to win out probably if they want to play playoffs. There's not necessarily. What are they? Are they They're eight and five? Eight and five. Yeah, eight and five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, behind Pittsburgh and Cleveland, and but they're one game behind Cleveland's Cleveland. Nine and four. But yeah, ha- yeah, can you just bring up there the AFC as a conference because the, there's yep. the North could. Have three teams get through? Possibly a three. That's but I, that seventh spot. It's going to be like the Dolphins, Patriots, depending on how they go. Well, that's the or, thing. I or think the, the Ravens. I think the Dolphins have eight wins. So we've got Buffalo. The Raiders good. have dropped off heaps. Yeah, I don't think the Raiders are going to make it. You got Kansas City's no. one, Steelers two, yep. Bills three, Bills three, Bills three. Bills three. Titans four, yeah, yep. Browns five, yeah, yep. Colts, Colts six. six, and then, then the seventh then we've got. Uh, Baltimore and Dolphins. Dolphins. Dolphins are ahead. Sorry. Oh, a, a one game ahead. Yeah. 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 Oh, they're they're both on eight and five. Okay. Uh, okay. And then the Patriots um, are what? We've got uh, the Raiders at seven and seven. Uh-huh. Yeah. Patriots six and seven. So a game behind. Yeah. Uh, Broncos, Chargers, Houston, Bengals, yeah. Jaguars, Jets. Mm. But there's there's what there's at least three teams there that are on. Well, they they, yeah. they and Finns are on eight. And then they've got, of course, Cleveland and Buffalo with nine ahead of them. Yeah, so. see, I, for some reason in my head, I thought the Dolphins were doing better than that suggests. Mm. Let's assume the Colts mm. and Browns close well, out. Eight and four was great for them. Close right, out. To be there. honest. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. It True. is. But they might miss out. They might miss out. Yeah. Because there's, there's a bunch well, of teams there. Well, and on paper, the Ravens are the best team there. Yeah. So that's kind of my point is yeah. I think the Ravens, they like both teams, like Finns and Ravens, probably need to win every game they can in the next three mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. kind of guarantee them that spot. Going to be like, very interesting that, yeah. yeah. And it, geez, it changes the dynamic. Good of them, I think, to, to open up this last spot. Uh, I've always thought it's a bit strange that you'd have 12 teams in a 32 league team uh, competition, I should say, go through to play playoff football. It's like, it's like a th- mm. nearly... A third, you know, whereas most team, uh, most comps, you have fifty percent of your teams playing playoffs. I like the move from the NFL with just it's more football. Definitely. Oh my! Hazelwood goodness. first ball gets a wicket. Oh my goodness! So Josh Hazelwood is one for none off one ball. He uh, has just got Agarwal four for fifteen. Coley's still out there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stand by all sorts. Uh, Hazelwood's just an, again another nice test cricket ball line length that's popped on him a fair yeah, bit. It's bounced up yeah, that inconsistent bounce that we were talking about, and again high on the outside edge and straight through Tim Payne. Very similar dismissal actually to um, how Pajara just got out to come and the over before test cricket. How good? How good? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, like twenty minutes, it all changes. Oh, so. big time, big time. Uh, t- t- tell you what. A little bit of a – I'll keep it quick. All these kids these days that are growing up with 10, 2020 cricket, <laughs> but yep. that's all they'll care about. Mate, this is the this is the best. This is the pinnacle. Yeah. The pinnacle. Enough said. Uh, back over to America. We're you going back and forth, for back and forth. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit distracting. You can watch – you can drink beers in the evening five nights in a row. <laughs> uh, the whole uh, day drinking thing gets a little bit lost. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, of um, course, we, let's, we, yeah, let's we, finish up these well, games. And we, I do stress we promote responsible uh, consumption of alcohol. That's why I'm on the mid drink these days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just back on the Ravens. So the schedule through to the end of regular season. So obviously, Jaguars this will. Should win. This week. Should smack them. Should win. Giants. Should win. Bengals. Should. So yeah. that they've got a really favourable uh, finish to their season. If Lamar 
doesn't get COVID slash hurt. If he plays like he did against the Browns, yeah, they're, they're, they're playing playoff football. Yeah, that's yep. a that's one of the easiest run homes uh, out of any team. You'd think. You'd think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we will need to check on in the Dolphins and their running. But mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Thanks, so after that, we've got LA Chargers at New York. New York. Which one? Jets. Sorry. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this week's toilet bowl has been confirmed. Yeah. yeah. Char- uh, Chargers should win this. Chargers week. coming off three in a row. Uh, Scoring yeah. some points. I think they'll win. Yeah. Yep. And the Jets don't want to win and go equal with the Jaguars. And <laughs> <laughs> miss out on Trevor Lawrence. Although Justin Fields is a pretty good quarterback himself. I think the Chargers win this pretty comfortably. Mm. Um, and then for the Dolphins, obviously they've got the Patriots this week, and then they've got the Raiders and Bills. See, so that's that's yeah, a hard. That's one, hard. Home. That's hard. Yeah, definitely harder than Baltimore. Yeah. Depend, depending how it goes, uh, if they win out, they could be playing Buffalo in that last game mm. uh, for the top spot in that yeah. division. So, uh-huh. um, uh, Buffalo got to drop a few. In yeah, the, they in would. This, yeah, because um, I think they're at they're in at nine though, aren't they? Or ten? Buffalo. Yeah. Um, they 10 and 4? 10, 10 and 3. 10 and 3. There's a game. They're, they're safe, I think. Should be safe. But if they lose the next two and the Dolphins win the next two, then they're on the same record. Look at that win vids, uh, thanks to Fox Sports. Big Stra- Australia's back up to about 65% on the back of three early wickets here. Mm. Um, oh, so what? 32 balls, 33 balls, two runs, three wickets. <laughs> pretty, pretty good start to it's a session. Tidy. Yeah, and it's, right. it's not really – it's just good bowling. It's not hooping. They're not getting yeah. that much uh, assistance in the air. Look, those balls might have deviated a little bit off the seam, but – I think it may be the bounce. The yeah, inconsistent the inconsistent bounce, bounce maybe. It's, the same, it's just always the same story, isn't it? When, team, when teams come out, that's bounce heaps, heaps for, yeah. for a length ball. Uh, yeah, that extra bounce over here really uh, does uh, cause headaches for – Opposition teams, especially from the subcontinent where the bounce is quite low. Oh, jeez. And Rahane's played a miss there against Josh Hazelwood on the third ball. Whew. The Indians will be lucky to make 50 the way they're going. Mm. It's back across the Pacific. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. That's Today, This I'll tell you what, this might be a marquee podcast for us because this is, this is on the esky. This is a bunch of sort of younger blokes who have grown up mm. – with American sport and European sport, uh, you know, b- being delivered straight straight to our TVs via cable, via the internet, uh, and this is what we're all about: getting around yeah. our Aussie sports that we played when we were three or four. Years. Oh my goodness! Oh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Josh Hazelwood has just picked up Rahane. Hey? Five uh, for fifteen. Caught, caught two wickets pa- in caught this pain. Moment. Yeah. So I think they've just lost three for none. Yeah. India go to five for fifteen. I don't care who you got out there now. Is Hazelwood two for two naught. for two for naught off his first over, and it's a, it's a carbon copy. That one probably a little bit fuller than the other two, and schnicks up straight through yeah. Tim the, Payne. The boys are all blowing up the the group chats, of course. Oh yeah, Nicky's Nicky, 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 straight Nicky. into it. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Aussie. Nicky said he was going to go to the game tomorrow. He's like, I might not be on. No, <laughs> no, this one might be over tonight. Uh, and. As I was saying before, Josh Hazelwood so rudely <laughs> interrupted with another peach. Um, this is all about us. This on yeah. the esky. This yeah. this is this, this is, is who we are. Yeah, this is who we are. We love our American sport. We love our Aussie sports. We love the games that we we just love sport. <laughs> yeah, just. we love all sport. Very typical Australians. We, we might have to start sport. start talking about the uh, Mongolian table tennis <laughs> one day. Um, but no, seriously, just just to finish up on this little rant. Um, we love the sports that we played when we were in diapers and we love the sports that we found, you know, as early teenagers. And I think that that will resonate with a lot of people around this country. Yep. You want to hope so. Moving forward. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> let's finish these NFL games for this week. <laughs> We've been going on a bit. <laughs> All right. So we should probably have a pretty solid win for Arizona Cardinals at home against Philly. Oh, oh well. no! Big big call. Yeah, yeah. Jalen, okay. Jalen Hurts has really turned that team around. Like the Eagles' yeah, defense yeah. is good, um, and Hurts has kind of sparked their offense a little bit. Mm. Um, I still want to back my boy uh, Kyler to have a good game, but mm. I think this is going to be closer than a lot of people think. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Okay. Yep, mm. I think uh, probably not that that much coincidence last week with Hurts getting his first start and then getting a big upset win. Mm. Um, yeah, okay. I, I'll go cards, but I think it'll be close. I'll take that on board. Yep. Um, so next after that, we've got New Orleans Saints at home hosting the Kansas City 
five. <laughs> yeah, so where you going? Where are you going with How many beers have you had? <laughs> Too many. <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans Saints hosting Kansas City Chiefs. Boom. Uh, uh, boom. So this is game of the round. Well, oh, maybe. Breeze back. Mm-hmm. Thomas out. Mm-hmm. Kansas City probably need Mahomes would want to bounce. He probably he played well, but he will still want to bounce back mm-hmm. after his three pick game last week. Mm-hmm. Got to keep, keep uh, it up, keep the momentum. Yeah, we, whether whether without Thomas, can Drew Brees keep pace with Mahomes? Can Kamara get in Kamara. there? Yeah, can he get you know ten catches and hundred yards receiving rushing? Like he, he's probably gonna have to carry it a little bit. Can Sanders and Smith step in there enough? Jared Cook got a touchdown last mm-hmm. week, so he. Yeah, I'm. I think Chiefs still probably win this. The Chiefs should win this before mm. the Breeze injury. This is a possible Super Bowl matchup. Yeah, yeah. Super Bowl preview yep. before Breeze injury. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what is it? He's had a month off. Yeah, about so, that. About so, that. Well, they, yeah. they were talking about he, he might have to be two weeks off and he'll be back. So oh, no, they've, they've sat him and say, "Heal, old man, before you come if back." You, if you Has break breaking one rib hurts like yeah. obliterating your ribs. Like no he did. idea. It's unbelievable that he's back now. Yeah. Um, yep. I'm looking forward to this one. I'll go Chiefs, but I think it'll be close. Yeah. I think there'll be a lot of points in this. Mm. 40 to 30. There you go. <laughs> Sean's taking the overs. It's always a massive line. It'll be a massive overs for this. Yeah. It's uh, it's always hard with the Chiefs because of their reputation. They're sixty favourites to win this game. So not as short as you might expect. The line is 52 and a half. It's high. It, 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 very, it is high, but sometimes they're 55, 56 for Chiefs yeah. games. I don't mind that. I'm, I'm still I'm still going over. That. Really depends on how Brees kind of looks when he comes back. Mm. Mm. He, he will technically though have Taysom Hill as a receiver back, so um, they've changed that up. Very a versatile Taysom, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, geez, that was just about a chance there as well. Keep going, um, James. What else have we got in the NFL? Yep. Um, so after that, rounding out Sunday football, we've got New York Giants at home hosting Cleveland Browns. This is a big game for playoff um, hopes. Yeah. Giants mm-hmm. pretty much must win. Browns have been real good, though, in the last month. Yeah. I'm going Browns. I'm going Cleveland, too. Um, I think they are yeah. the real deal. Maybe not su- maybe not Super Bowl winning real deal, but winning a playoff game, real deal. They're going to compete, like they did against the Ravens last week. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're mm-hmm. top of the AFC like the other, the other guys are. No, nah, I don't think they're quite Bills, Steelers. And obviously Do they play Pittsburgh before the end Chiefs. of the year? I feel like they might. That'll be a really that'll be nice a good game. Yeah, I think that'll Cleveland. be a good. That, I mm. think they do. Oh, yeah. I think Coley's gone. You're joking, Coley. Oh gone. my goodness, Paddy Cummins has just dismissed uh, one of the best batsmen in the world. India a six for nineteen. Can someone can someone so, look up lowest test totals? So let's go back to what, what did Peppy say? India are in all sorts. Yeah. So I'm now agreeing with that. I statement. said that twenty <laughs> minutes ago. Oh my. Goodness gracious me. So, 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 so he, Paddy Cummins is four for 12. So that four he just hit, he hit mm-hmm. that in the gap and Cameron um, Green missed it. Yes, yes. And it looks like he's taken, uh, he's gone back gone back to the well and they've got him. So they must have set him up with a, bit yeah, of a plan. There. Yeah, a little bit of a plan there. Uh, so the ball before Coley gets four, it's a little bit short and wide outside off. He yeah. sort of hits it with the toe and yeah, gets hits, it away. But. Hits it, it's about a metre wide of Cameron Green's right hand at backward point and... So then let's just he, have a look. Does he catch it or is he a fibber? Ah, uh, so it's actually a different. Oh, that's no. there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing Ooh, wrong with does that. Does he have two grabs at it? No, I think that's fine. So so Coley's driving this time rather than playing off the back foot. It actually gets Ooh. Cam Green in his like wrists. Oh, this might be close. Oh, oh wow! Looking at that, <laughs> they're, gonna have to, they're gonna have to zoom in on that. He's had two two attempts mm, at it. Mm. Coley, of course, is they've given him out and Coley's gone upstairs. Green thinks he's got it. Let's have a look here. It, uh, yeah, it hits him in his wrists. It bobbles up, hits him in the chest. Yeah. Oh, and then we've got to zoom that in. Yeah. Well, to me, it looks like his hands are underneath it there. Let's continue with the NFL. This is going to take a few minutes for them to deliberate on. Mm-hmm. Massive, massive decision for the third umpire to make here. It's huge. Cold On field called out as well. So yeah. does that play into catches has got to be, you know, without uh, – it's got to be some evidence that this ball does touch the ground for them to yeah. overturn it. Don't really see it. 
It's hard to tell it's, on it's this. Hard, it's, especially with the pink on the arms kind of makes it a bit hard. We might need to pause That's the true. podcast, run downstairs, chuck the 65-inch <laughs> 4K on and <laughs> get a bit of uh, That's a better, pic, better picture zoom, quality uh, rather than just the HDMI running KO. No, I don't think. I don't think so. He's sort of got it cupped it against his chest there. Chest. Yeah, but it's in. Where's it goes? Oh, where's it? It's in his right arm, in his armpit. So, no, it's in his hand. It's in his right hand. Yeah, it's in his right hand. But where it comes to his right hand comes across, and it's in his armpit. Mm. So the ball's like in his armpit. Yeah, I think they're going to give that. I think so too. Yeah, I don't think there's reasonable because it bounces. You see, it bounces back across, and then it's in his hand. So I'd say it's catch now. And we're all arguing the same point here. Yeah, fire goalie. Mm. What what else have <laughs> yeah. we got? We got to get through this uh, NFL preview. Right, let's finish. Let's finish it so, up. So I think he's going to. Yeah, I think he's going to give this out. He's keeping given. Yeah, he's going to be. Yeah, Virat six for nineteen. India. Ugh. Let's just what monkey Google <laughs> lowest test totals. I think it's like it's something real gross, like twenty eight or something. Um, but this is looks like it's going to be one for the record books. Uh, Saha and Vahari are both recognised batsmen out there. Uh, Ashwin can sort of bat a little bit, but then they're. Their ta- like their quicks can't bat at all. So oh, they threw their wickets away in the first innings. Mm. Have you got it's a great right, catch. So lowest test totals? Lowest test totals. We've totals. We've got it's a draw between Australia and India. Mm-hmm. Forty two. Australia was back in ni- uh, eighteen eighty eight. Forty two. See, I was way off. I thought it was less than that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then India a little bit more recently in nineteen seventy four. 42. 42. 42. Yeah, six for 19. For one, for one innings? Wow. Six for 19 currently. Man, why not get there? It's got, <laughs> if they may get more than 42, but it's not going to be more than 60 or 70, you'd think. Mm. It's all going to depend on these two guys, Saha and Vahari, their last two recognised bats. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And it's all unfolding live on the Esky. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Crazy. All right, let's it. finish this out. Um, let's see see if they yeah. hopefully so, they might take any more wickets while we keep going. No, nah, <laughs> hopefully there is. I think this is good uh, listening. So back on Cleveland. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So back on Cleveland. So do they play the Steelers? So they do play yeah, the Steelers. So, so Giants this week, Jets next week, and, and then Steelers. The Steelers. That'll be a great kind of prelim to the playoffs, I reckon. Who's yeah. that? Cleveland. So can you repeat that? Giants, Giants, Jets, Jets Steelers. Steelers. They win two of those games. Yeah. So and that will be... T- so that puts it at 10, 10 and 4. Yep. And then... Uh, ten and a, that puts yep. them at 11 and 4. Sorry. Yes. Yes. 11 and 4. Mm-hmm. And then a massive one and against then, the Steelers in week 17. Yeah. Yep. So... Steelers might lose a few games leading up to that. When they was the last time Cleveland won 11 games? Well... Going, going back there. Yeah. So Monday Night Football is Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. The last uh, should, Steelers should win that, and so that'll, last that'll take 15. them to twelve. Last so of week fifteen, Pittsburgh should win. They, yeah. I think, they snapped their two-game losing streak uh, yeah. against a quarterbackless uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. yeah, they should. I don't think uh, Brandon Allen's going to do too much against the number one defense in the league. No. no, and then they have the Colts the week after. Okay. Well, after probably our longest ever end of <laughs> uh, Lots of segment. interruptions from the club. Uh, uh, well, we're, we're literally watching history un, uh, yeah. unfold here at the Adelaide Oval. Uh, this Aussie quicks are just making an absolute mockery of the Indian top order. Um, oh, man, this is a test cricket. How good? Uh, staying over in the States, we've got some NBA news to get through. Yep. Uh, the Greek freak, I'm going to have a crack here. It's very hard. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's better than I do. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Uh, the Greek freak, everyone knows Giannis. Uh, he's signed a max deal extension. Uh, I think it's 195 US. It's it's the biggest deal in the NBA because mm-hmm. I, I, I don't he, know how the max deals work because I know some of the other guys did the 190 US mil, but it, his is a little bit more. And I wonder if I that's think it's money owed. I think gets yeah. included in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they for whatever reason they've got a max. Yeah, number it's just their cap yeah. max, but it's, he's uh, let, let's put it delicately. It's a shitload of money. <laughs> yeah, it's a shitload of money, and <laughs> he de- he money. deserves it. Uh, being by far and away the best young player uh, in the in the league recently. Well, Luka Doncic probably might have something to say about yeah. that. Obviously, different positions. Uh, so the Bucks uh, retain him, uh, and will uh, they actually are the second favorites this year to win the? Well, they the in, they invested mm. very heavily in their roster to kind of. Try to please yeah. um, Gannis mm-hmm. as well to say, mm-hmm. hey, like, we want you here. You're a core part. We've got some new pieces around you. Mm-hmm. We want, you know, let's let's make a run of it. Mm-hmm. So, I've, of course, I think he's then, you know, he's seen, 
seen the commitment they've made to him and he's rewarded that and gone, decided to stay there yep. for big, big dollars. Big money. Um, the preseason's been underway. Um, yep, a few games. So, oh, always hard. It's it's very similar to the NFL preseason. You know, it's, there has been a lot of starters playing a fair few minutes, uh, but then obviously they don't play the same minutes. As so it's not like hard. Uh, it's, it's, no. it's Yeah, they're just getting their shots in, trying – you know, getting there, trying to build that chemistry with new guys, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, practice out some of their, maybe a few of their plays, maybe not any of the like their, you know, core sort of stuff, but mm-hmm. the 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 foundation sort of pieces just work their way through it. Um, it's kind of like a sparring session. It's, it's practice. They're, pra- yeah. they're they're practicing this stuff, but against new com- new opponents. So. For sure, for sure. A uh, a name to keep an eye on: uh, Taylor Horton Tucker from the Lakers. He had a 33-point game against the Clippers. He's the 46th pick overall uh, from last year's draft. Pretty hard starting five to break into. Yeah, I'm definitely. not uh, suggesting that in, uh, by any means, but they've got a nice bench player there that uh, I think he'll come a long way this year. He's only 20 years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, you kind of got to think, oh, you know, in a regular season game, 33 points, not much to write home about. In a preseason game, it's... That's uh, unreal. I think the highest mm. ever. They, they don't even know because of the old preseason. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't have the stats <laughs> yeah. for them. They think Wilt Lechilt's, uh Chamberlain had about forty four in a preseason mm. game before. It's obviously not like the regular season where um, guys like Kobe put up eighty yeah. and uh, Jordan had seventy odd in a game. Uh, so thirty three in a preseason game, very impressive. Mm-hmm. And our own Patty Mills, Canberra's Patty Mills, put up twenty four. Uh, he won't be in the starting five this year. Is he playing for? The Spurs, Spurs still, still, still yeah. at the Spurs. Uh, he's, he's a good rotational player. Yeah, great cool. rotational player and yeah. good, obviously, for us Aussie basketball fans to see him uh, getting a few against OKC. Let's leave that for the preseason. Uh, you take it with a grain of salt in the NBA. Uh, the season proper is starting Tuesday the 22nd in the US, so Wednesday morning the 23rd, our time. Perfect for the Aussie viewers, a lot of guys being on holidays. Yep. Uh, yep. The first night will be uh, Golden State Warriors uh, taking on the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Who That's a big game. Yeah, and the Nets. Bit of a rivalry game there, you'd mm-hmm. say. Yeah, well, for sure. Revenge for sh- game for a few of the guys. For sure. And the Nets have got, assembled a really nice roster uh, to support Kevin Durant there. Uh, they're actually the third favourite for the taking out the season proper at $6.50. And then uh, the Battle of LA, the Clippers and Lakers. Uh, that's a nice matchup uh, there as the second Is game. Is Kawhi Lennon still playing for Clippers or is he gone elsewhere? No, Kawhi's, Kawhi's still, still there. They've got a, a, a really nice team there. Yeah. Uh, the Lakers, mm. however, $3.60 favourites to take out the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mm. great for us basketball fans down under to see the NBA getting underway, even if it is probably two months later than usual. Have you seen the latest kind of Harden chat that's been going on? Uh, they're still talking about Philadelphia. Yeah, and it sounds like they've put um, Simmons on the on the on the um, on the table for this. Really, so, uh, wow. I think Houston was very keen to get a young piece, as we kind of talked about. Mm-hmm. And I think 49ers, not the 49ers, the 69ers, uh, 70, 70, 76, 76, 76, oh my god, 69ers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's some feel, year it's got yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, shit name yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. That, Philadelphia they should change it to the 69ers <laughs> yeah. uh, Philadelphia yeah it seems like they've put um, Simmons kind of on the table and so yeah. to try and get that deal done because I think mm. the Nets of course was he Howden's favourite spot to go to mm-hmm. which makes sense they've got a pretty unreal roster adding him to it would make it you know, they'd, they'd move from that 650 they're at the moment to, to, the, to the 350 <laughs> favourites. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. They'd, they'd be up there. Um, Harden, of course, uh, looking a little bit tubby uh, coming into preseason, so had a good off season by looks of it. Pot meat kettle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I'm not a professional athlete. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> true. We aren't even professional podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, give him a couple of weeks, and of course, you'll get the match fitness. And yeah, for sure. I, I think he's. Again, he's like, I'm playing for Houston. So, yeah, I don't want to say he's going to mail it in, but he, uh, he wants out. So he yep. clearly wants out. Mm-hmm. Nets yep. is his favourite. Um, the Philadelphia being his second, whether he ends up there, it sounds like Philly have started to start that negotiation. Mm-hmm. like, okay, yes, we're interested. Yes, Simmons now on the table. Mm-hmm. Simmons in Houston, that would be a big fork in his career. Like, uh, yeah, yes and no, because he loses – Probably 
the players around him. Yeah. Although well, they, Houston had a really good year last year. Guys yeah. like Clint Capello, like mm. he's got some. They've good added John Wall as well. Yeah, so yeah, former uh, All Star. So maybe, maybe it's not the worst thing for Ben. No, and well, they are very much going to have to. The franchise of one hundred percent will be around him. Like mm. he won't have a bead there, kind of competing for um, who's the face of the franchise. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, but having said that, the, the Philadelphia very much built the team they've got now around. They've got a bunch of shooters on the outside and mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Bede and Simmons can be in the paint. Mm-hmm. Um, adding another shooter to that roster and Harden, kind of a bit interesting. But, yeah, Harden, you know, MVP a year and a half ago. So mm-hmm. like, uh, you always want to add that kind of talent. Mm-hmm. And maybe that makes a bead yep. better. Like, who knows? Imagine if they get Harden, though. Yeah. And keep Simmons. If they oh, I, I, is that possible? I don't think it's possible. I think uh, Houston want too much. Out okay. of, they need they need a player, and who who in the, who in Philadelphia would you put up? Because yeah, that marquee you, player, yeah, mm-hmm. you're not yeah. really going to switch a bead for Harden because I think that hurts you too much. As and very different, yeah, very different. Whereas positionally, yeah. So again, Simmons Harden play different kind of games, mm. but there's. You want that young talent that could lead your team and be your face, which is what more what Simmons' game is. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we'll keep you posted next week. See what happens. Well, yeah. Otherwise, Harden's going to be playing for Houston for <laughs> the first few weeks of this year, the first few games of this year, mm-hmm. this season, because year's about to end. Mm-hmm. Uh, but see how long he stays there. Whether he, how long into the season he actually stays with Houston. I don't know. Like. Would you risk getting hurt too? Like, as if you're Harden? What do you reckon he holds out? If you want out, like, yeah. And, yeah. and Houston want a big deal. Like, if you go out there and do your ACL, or, yeah. or your Achilles, look, seems pretty common in the mm-hmm. basketball guys. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all year you're out. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, all that trade's kind of, you know, dry up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Maybe something happens in the next few days. Interesting. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on it. Definitely. Uh, the F1? F1. Yep. So. Yes. I'll, go, I'll go for my ceremonial <laughs> wee break. <laughs> uh, the last race of the year uh, yep. in Abu Dhabi. Um, on Fight Island. On Fight Island. Well, next yep. to Fight Island. Next to Well, well it, it, Fight Island, well, the, the fight bits are very small, <laughs> small part off to the side, um, I believe. So yep. uh, last race for Perez at Racing Point. Um, yep. So last race for the season. Last race. Yep. I, I said last race yep. for the season. Sorry, yep. Fuck you, Jebs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he spent the last seven years there f- at Racing Point, which will now become – was Force India, Racing Point. And yep. what are they becoming now? Austin Martin. Austin Martin, yeah. Yep. Um, he did not finish this race, unfortunately. Um, mm. But s- looks like he's signed with Red Bull. So yes. he's actually got a seat in Albon – uh, will become more of a reserve or maybe get loaned out. We'll see. Yeah. But yeah, yeah we'll he's see. lost his position, unfortunately, for him. Um, didn't really have a strong enough back half of the year, really. No. Uh, well, the back half was okay. He did get up in the numbers. I think it was the middle of the season where he had a few retirements, a yeah. few low scoring races. Perez had a better season overall, I think. Um, Definitely. Uh, besides the, he had a few did not finishes, but besides that, he. Um, kind of really clearly showed that he's a talented driver and he, he needs a spot. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so, yeah, in regards to the race, it was pretty of a nothing race. Yeah, none of Top events, order no, sort of – well, it didn't change really. So. Yeah, I think, f- yeah, from – from oh, I think almost from like one through eight was the same as what they started. Like, yeah, not mm. – of course, they moved throughout the race, but how they started kind of ended um, through the pit window. Like, Abu Dhabi really didn't give them enough opportunities – um, no. to actually have overtaking. Um, so a lot of people were blown up about, you know, this is what's wrong with F1, that it's a possession and it was boring. Mm. Uh, Verstappen started pole of one uh, from there. Um, Hamilton, yep. of course, his first race back f- since COVID. Um, yep. Finished, what did he finish? Third? He finished or third. Or f- yeah. Third, um, and Bottas was in between. So yeah. off qualifying, it was Verstappen, Bottas, pole. Yeah. Uh, Hamilton, sorry. And yeah. then that's how the race ended. Mm-hmm. Uh our boy Ricardo qualified 12th, mm-hmm. did work his way up the order to 7th. Yep. Um, really finished strong for um, Renault as well. Renault had a good end of the year. I'm not sure who yep. finished third in the construction championship because um, it was very, very close to end that. Because I know Renault had one big week and then Racing Point had another big week the following. Uh, yes. So it was pretty close. Uh, let me double check. Mm. But... Uh, 
because I don't know McLaren, of course, being the other um, mm. team that was close to that third, they've actually got yep. reported that there's going to be a big US um, investment uh, consortium going to give them uh, big money. Uh, yeah, MSP Sports Capital looking to invest three hundred plus million dollars AU. That is big money. So if, you know, I think uh, for example, I think sorry, I'm mixing my words. I think Mercedes spent like three hundred million pounds though. Um, yep. For one season, so uh, for to compete with them, yeah, I know they're going to put a cap in not next year but the following year to kind of bring that spending down. But three hundred yep. million dollar investment yeah. um, kind of gives you know that's a third of your racing season covered for money wise. So that's that's Definitely. big. That's big news. So huge um, news for Ricardo, of course. Yeah, moving putting to that it team. into context. Yeah, big news for Ricardo. Um, so McLaren did finish third. Mm-hmm. Racing so point third, was yeah. just behind them. Um, in fourth, and Renault dropped down a little bit um, to fifth. Yeah. Um, yeah, so now that the season's over, I think it's all about um, driver movements, contracts, all that sort of stuff. So so, he, so Toto signs three-year extension, so he's going to stay put with um, yep. Mercedes? Yeah, yeah. So a little bit of movement in the Mercedes team. So one of the um, brand sponsors, Ineso, um upped their investment in the in the team, um, going to one third partner, um, which meant that Daimler who so essentially Daimler, um, Inceno and mm. um Toto Wolf will all be one third partners. Yep. Toto Wolf had to buy up a little bit of stock. Yeah. So Daimler sold off. Equal one third partners. Yep, equal cool. one third partners. So obviously both Hamilton and Bottas being off contracts will be a very interesting off season for both of them because Toto and Hamilton obviously have that connection. Yeah. My, my hot take, if Hamilton wants to continue, yep. like if he doesn't retire, like he wants to continue, he's going to stay at Mercedes. Yes. So he'll and be I think one of the drivers. Toto signing that extension pretty much guarantees Just, that. Yeah. yeah. I think if Hamilton wants to come back, he'll be at Mercedes. Yeah. Bottas, on the other hand, I have a feeling George Russell is going to take that spot. I, I think, think, yeah. Yeah. George Russell definitely seems to be in a hot seat. Um, definitely outperformed Bottas in that one race. Yeah. Um, unfortunate in the in Hamilton's car, of course. So in Hamilton's um, car, so um, but they should be very similar the, the Mercedes cars. You'd so. think so, yeah. yeah. Very, but again, young Russell's talent versus older very, talent. Very competitive. Um, I think Bottas and Toto do have a connection. I think Toto used to be a manager mm. for him, so hard to play that one out, but. Interesting yeah. to see what happens in the next couple weeks. Know, he's only one um, third of the partners of just talked, so the other two might want yep. to say, "Hey, you, we've got two aging stars. Well, let's let's invest in the young bloke. He's only twenty two, uh, and start bringing him through. So when Hamilton does retire, uh, we've got someone that can keep the team going. Yeah. Um, in terms of that three year extension, though, it is as team principal and CEO, so does have a lot of power. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Does have a lot of control over the team. Um. Outside of that, not too much really happening at the moment. Uh, Yuki Tsunoda, um, mm-hmm. who was third place in the F2 this year, Red Bull Junior and backed by Honda, takes Kvyat's seat at AlphaTauri. Yep. Um, pretty interesting driver, has ascended pretty quickly through the order. So, Japanese? Japanese, yeah. I assume so on that name. Yep. So, um, in the last four years, he started in F4, mm-hmm. made his way. Spent one year in F4, made his way up to F3, spent one year in F3, uh, spent one year in F2, and now is taking uh, the F- F1 seat. Yeah. So interesting to see what happens with So him. he'll be the only Japanese driver. Yep. So and he's the first one for a couple of years. First one since um, 2014 yeah. after Kobayashi. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So heading into off season, I guess, again, looking at transfers and contract signings and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But other than that, Probably quiet down for the next couple of months. Yep. Um, leading yeah, it'll into be very quiet until Australian Grand Prix. Is that the first one? Yes. Next yes. season? Which is usually mid March, I think. Yep. So, yeah, it'll be a little while before any more of the Brum Brum cars. That's it. So, that'll wrap up F1 and we'll move into some MMA and boxing news. Um, a lot of it uh, rumors more than anything else. Um, there's talk about Fury versus Joshua. Turn your phone off, you can't. I think it's coming from my, um, <laughs> from my laptop. 
That should be easy to silence. There we go. Um, <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> uh, so there's talk about Fury, Joshua. They're looking... That'd be th- huge. They're going to have a fight, and of course there's probably a rematch clause in that, so they're looking at two fights back-to-back. Um, they're talking about 500 million pounds in total, which is $880 million Australian. That um, is ridiculous money, a, isn't so it? I that think, paycheck. <laughs> yeah, so I think they're talking and the first one's probably going to be around the 200 mm-hmm. and then the, the, the rematch, of course, will get more money because you, you draw the eyes and you kind of build up the story. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Joshua, of course, uh, defended, retained his title on the weekend. Um, did it quite easily, I believe, from what I've seen in that. Uh to, he's got three of the belts. I think Fury's got one right. of the four heavyweight belts. Mm-hmm. So, of course, it's still a unification fight. I think Fury still has to fight someone. Oh, yeah. Wilder. Wilder, yep. <laughs> He's got a... <laughs> Fury, I, Wilder, three, that I be. I think that's the case. And they're, they're one apiece. Yep. One yep. apiece, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's the case, though. I'm not sure what happens with that with Wilder. Um, timing will be difficult. Yeah, the timing of that's kind of difficult. But it looks like there'll be two fights between Fury and Joshua next year um, if Fury can get past Wilder. And I think he might have to fight someone else. He's going to fight some other one, no-name guy, um, before then as well. But How good is heavyweight boxing at the moment? Oh, well, those mm. those three, mm. they're essentially carrying it. So Yeah, they're sort of head and shoulders above anyone else, yeah, it seems. Yeah. But but, and Fury, of course, demolishing Wilder in the last one, mm-hmm. uh, kind of put him up there so it's him and Joshua the the next two so those two have to fight maybe Wilder goes away and kind of rebuilds his image and then comes back beats one of them like it's yeah that's what you want out of the heavyweight boxing you want Mm. these top guys competing you want some you know more than one guy just completely dominating Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it'd be interesting to follow what about Jake Paul oh man (laughs) (laughs) polarizing figure yeah so we we were talking about his brother brother logan last week Mm -hmm. getting a fight against floyd mayweather Mm -hmm. uh for silly money so jake's now come out and offered mcgregor 50 mil for a boxing match call him out on social media so it is for boxing Boxing. i assume boxing yes he will get murdered in Uh, i I agree on that yes Yeah, um, again, much he, like his brother fighting someone a lot smaller than him. Yes. Well, not, not, Pro, not, as, so McGregor is bigger than Floyd is, mm-hmm. but Paul mm. is... Jake is small. Uh, yeah, Jake is bigger than McGregor would be, but also smaller than Logan. Correct, yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think this is closer matchup weight-wise and um, size and reach. <laughs> I think Jake's going to have a bit more, but... Yep. I don't think it matters. Like McGregor's going to smack him, so I hope he takes it. Yeah. And for fifty mil, as if you wouldn't. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know why he's throwing out that number. Like, I'm not, I don't think he Jake's has a backer. He has a backer. Really? So someone backer has backed there. him for fifty wow. mil. Really? <laughs> We're talking about it. Yeah, we are. Wow. So, uh, but and that's that's the main thing from yeah. so, Jake Paul's perspective. So the bit on Instagram, he's just he's got one follow, and, a, <laughs> and so he's following one person, yes. Jake Paul, and it's <laughs> McGregor's fiance. Yeah. But he was getting stuck <laughs> into shit. he was getting stuck into McGregor's missus and saying like, "Why are you with her? She's only a four. Like <laughs> he saw her. Obviously, all in the theater. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty dog to start talking about people's family, uh, yeah. but that's what he's yeah. made a career out of, is talking shit. Yeah, it's, it's uh, bait. It's all bait. It is all bait. For some, I don't know why, this speaks to my own prejudices, I get, because May, I kind of want his brother to beat Mayweather and then I kind of want McGregor to kill him. <laughs> like, I don't know why that I'm leaning that way. Yeah, uh, Jack's a bit more of a fuckwick than Logan. Yeah, is, but, yeah. 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 So you, you still want to... You want to see at least one of them get humbled. Like, that's what you're after. Yeah, or both. <laughs> yes, or both. Um, Mel McGregor, though, of course, has Dustin Poirier mm-hmm. in January. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he's he's preoccupied. So, yeah. he's not going to take this, yep. this mid, for, mid-year at yeah. least. Yeah. If that. But the other thing is he's under contract, of course, with the UFC. So, uh, so then they've got yeah. to... Re- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They because what they did with Floyd is they had to cross promote, so they mm-hmm. did it together. Mm-hmm. So, and I think Floyd's with Golden Boy, maybe I can't remember who's his. Pro- oh, he might have his own promotion by now. Um, so. so I'm not sure who's going to promote. You know, do that promotion with Jake Paul. Uh, other thing is maybe McGregor. He, maybe he's only got like he's doing one fight deal kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So maybe he's free to do whatever he wants. But there's, you know, the UFC is another massive beast that's got to uh, take part in this. Yeah. 
And uh, it's interesting, isn't it, with the rise of social media, how all this exhibition shit talking stuff's oh, well, even got a platform. This wasn't a thing two years ago. Yeah. But you look, like, well, yeah. blame McGregor for starting this yeah. doing mm-hmm. g- against Floyd. Like, I think he kind of kicked this off for the exhibition thing. Mm. And you look at what yeah. Tyson and um, uh, Holyfield, wasn't it? Uh, Jones Jr. Jones Jr. Jones Sorry, Jr., I yep. got the too confused. There was um, talk it was going to be a Holyfield. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Jones Jr., like, you see the numbers they did and they've made good money out yeah. of it. Like, and it was a snooze fest. Exactly. It was a bunch yeah. of 50-year-old blokes punching around. Well, so. I mean, mm-hmm. Paul Logan and KSI was sort of that start of the yeah. exhibition, mm-hmm. sort of mm-hmm. throw your hat in the ring, see what yeah. happens sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Blokes that had never boxed before kind of kicking it off and putting on big yeah. events. Mm-hmm. I think there was also a big say moment for say YouTube trying to go mainstream yeah. yes. uh-huh. to get more of that. So th- we've now got that point where like McGregor's done his thing, YouTube's done theirs and now they're colliding mm. and uh, it's kind of caused the situation we're in now. Mm-hmm. Do you think uh, this diminishes the reputation of boxing? I th- the purists hate mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think so because I don't want to say boxing's been dead for 10 years, but it's it lost yes. a lot of eyeballs from guys that weren't mainstream. So this put them yeah. back in the mainstream. Mm-hmm. So True. it's probably good overall for boxing as a sport going forward, because um, yeah. now you got guys talking. Well, you take the Australian boxing from from moment and the the big yeah. pay per view they had at Bank West on Wednesday, like that was a big event mm-hmm. because it's got more eyeballs, more people are now interested in boxing than they were even a year ago. Like mm-hmm. it's True. definitely got more eyeballs back on that sp- sport after UFC probably had dominated for the last maybe decade, two decades. Like, yeah, they'd, yep. um, UFC had been all over it as the premier combat sport. So mm-hmm. boxing is now kind of getting back into there. Mm. Heavyweights yep. picking up as well mm-hmm. really, really helped. Um, you know, Canelo down in the yeah, middle like, line, yeah. 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 Clisco's, you know, dominated the heavyweight for a, a long time. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of really helped that sport and picked it up. And another mm. wicket's fallen here in the cricket. Uh, India really rallied uh, for a seven-run partnership. <laughs> 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 they go from six for 19 to seven for 26. Josh Hazelwood uh, has got Vahari, I think it is. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's not a good way to get out when your no. team's he's just played it off his pads straight to Manus at mid wicket. Yeah. Didn't hit it down. He hit it. That's he's just spoon fed it. Didn't really hit it ord- at all. Really ordinary dismissal in Test match cricket. Uh, it, I have it, to see the replay. Well, I it, wonder if it. It was a, Saha the keeper, not Saha. Vahari. Uh, so s- three wickets. They need to make seventeen runs to get over that forty-two to avoid going in the history books as the lowest total ever. Yeah. This is Ashwin comes out though, so it's gonna be a challenge. Ashwin can bat. Ashwin can bat. He likes to throw the bat though. So and then, the, like I said before, uh, Boom, Boomer is already out, obviously. So yeah. it's only Shami and uh, Yadav to come. Oh boy, this yeah. could, could get really ugly. Mm. Ashwin, that's one of the better number eights in the world coming out. Probably the best actually. He's made four Test hundreds, averages twenty eight. They're gonna, they're gonna need some of that. Don't, I don't really care how, I'll good, be, I'll be how good you are when you come out at seven for 26. Yeah. I'd be interested to see if this ball that Hazel just bowled um, had a bit more pop in it, whether it got up on him a little bit. Yeah, it might have done, but it just, it just looks like a stupid shot to play in that situation. Anyways. But I'll be some, there you go. Last time, 42 versus – for India, 42 So, so that's India's yeah. own records. Uh-huh. Yeah. 42, yeah. 58, 58. Yeah. Um, and – Obviously, that 42 was against England in 1974. Not obviously, because probably not many people <laughs> knew that one off the top of their heads. <laughs> um, where yeah. do we get up to? The boxing. So, so we just yeah. talk, we just mentioned uh, Wednesday night at Bank West. So what, I think what happened? I, I didn't watch this live. So uh, they were on the undercard, they actually had, um, they say, the fight of the year, um, two of the... <laughs> Has he schnicked him? Go oh on. my goodness, Ashwin, after I pump up his tyres saying he's the best number eight in the world, <laughs> looks like he's schnicked one first ball through to Tim Payne of Josh Hazelwood. <laughs> going uh, to review. Going, going to, to review. review that we're watching with this with no sound. Everyone behind the stumps goes up. The, <laughs> the bowl has gone up. No huge deviation on this, but it'll be interesting. No, no deviation. Ha- be Hazelwood will be on a hat-trick as well. He'll be on a hat-trick, and he's four for three, if you don't mind, yeah. if this is good. Great seam position. Doesn't need to play at this. Oh, oh. man, he smashed that, I reckon. Oh. 
Just uh, he's got, he's hit nothing else. So if, if that's there's right. anything, but, yeah, it's, yeah it's the, all bat's, the bat's a long way from the pad, and I reckon visibly that's deviated. Although oh, nothing, nothing oh. spot. Is there a oh. little tickle there on the outside edge? Hard to say from hot spot. Swings it back to the Indians' favour. There doesn't seem to be too much. Schnicko, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. There. there's something there. Hundred percent when it hits the yeah, yeah, that's out. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> wow, yeah. Patrick Ball live unfolding yeah. on the esky. Let's try and wrap up um, <laughs> boxing. What okay. happened in this Gallon Hunt fight? So there's a good uh, fight on the undercard. Um, I can't remember who was it, but they went absolute wall, m- multiple knockdowns. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yep. I think they ended up going to decision. Um, judges' um, decision, of course, uh, and I can't remember who won. Anyway, the co- <laughs> good insights. <laughs> the, the main events: so Gallen yeah. versus Mark Hunt. Um, Gallen gets the decision, uh, but he ate yep. some absolute bombs from uh, from Hunt in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, did well to probably stay up. Yeah, good chin um, on him. Yeah, yeah. So some people were um, actually scored this for Hunt, mm-hmm. saying that the judges kind of got this wrong. Um, Hunt did more damage. Gallon did more work, which is, I think, what we all kind of thought going into this. Mm-hmm. Gallon, yeah. of course, was always going to outwork and outpoint Hunt, mm-hmm. uh, which was the case. Mm-hmm. Hunt, I think, was only given one round on this. Um, most said he run probably two, um, and he did yeah. have some good shots and others, so he could have possibly snuck up the four of the six. Yes, yeah, so I think two two of the judges gave um, Hunt one round, and I think one gave him two rounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he, in the second round, uh, he absolutely hammers Gallon. Gallon said afterwards, if he'd come after me, he probably would have finished me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. But Hunt, Hunt kind of took it slow and methodical. Um, definitely showed the power there. S- still at 44, like he still can throw hands. Um, mm. But, you know, Gallon gets a win, unfortunately. Doesn't get humbled. Um, afterwards, he calls out Whitaker, uh, Rob Whitaker, that is, who fights at 185 pounds. Um, a lot smaller than yeah. Gallon weighed in, I think, at 104 for this fight, so that's kilos, two kilos. kilos, which is 240. Yeah, 235. Yeah, mm-hmm. between so, that's 230, 240. So yeah, got an easy 40, 50 pounds on him. Um, so maybe Robert, may, maybe, maybe we, Robert gets the 200, but yeah. It's, well, maybe Robert should say, yeah, I'll fight you at 185. Yeah, Gallon will have to lose well, a ton of weight. Sounds yeah. so dumb. Uh, as we talked about. Uh, Whitaker's the number one contender in that division at the moment. What? Yeah, he's not. Yeah. He, he and, and, he, and the UFC is going to go, nah, I, nah, nah get fuck fucked. off. Yeah, man. he's yeah. UFC contract. Whitaker's for, entertained yeah. the idea, but UFC is obviously. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this it all stems oh. from some uh, podcast that Whitaker did, not ours. Um, <laughs> where we might get you on next week. Yeah, well, yeah. where Gallon calls him out, and mm. well, no, uh, someone asks him, "Would he fight Gallon if he asks?" And he goes, "Yeah, of course." Mm. But Gallon's not going to want to fight me. Mm. And and I think he had some laugh after it, and Gallon's like, I didn't like his laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I'm se- I'm sensing some animosity <laughs> between yourself and Paul Gallon. Oh, he played for New, New South Wales, so fuck him. <laughs> Obviously, the other two yeah, members yeah, on the ski are Worst Queensland fans. team ever. <laughs> fuck you, Gallon. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't mind Paul Gallon. <laughs> uh, what? So what actually happened between the two boxes on this card? Ah, uh, so uh, Tim Tazu being the the actual feature of this, mm-hmm. who no one yeah. actually talked about for the four months nah, leading up to this fight. Just, no. yeah, he'd be uh, a little bit pissed off for, about it, yeah, you'd, you'd think. Fighting Morgan, um, who was Kiwi, who's on a bit of a run at the moment, uh, yeah. you know, solid boxer, but it comes out and smokes him. Like, mm. with, within the first, like, I think, 30 seconds of this fight, like, um, you know, they kind of stand it off, and then uh, I think Tazu hits him. Yeah, no. He knocks him down within the first 30, I think. He hits him with like an uppercut, knocks him down. Morgan gets back up. Um, Tazu just comes forward and smokes him with the right hand, right right hook, and he just goes straight down and that's all over. And that's all she wrote. Yeah. So who's he going to fight for this world title? Do so you know? not sure yet. yet to be, but it's confirmed that he'll get the world I title think, fight? I think he's super welterweight and the current – um, holder is in Brazil, mm-hmm. stuck in Brazil because of COVID, mm-hmm. can't mm-hmm. leave. Obviously, so he can't. Bra- Brazil been ravaged by yeah, COVID, so he can't defend. Mm-hmm. So they're going to strip him of the belt. So he'll. That's so rough, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very rough. So uh, of course, I think he'll probably have some unification kind of thing in the future. He'll probably get an attempt once COVID clears up in Brazil and he can get out. Mm-hmm. Um, so then he'll. So. He, 
um, team's got to fight s- someone for that vacant belt. Is the is um, the most likely uh, fight. Um, interesting. Uh, after the fight, uh, Michael Zafara mm-hmm. um, actually confronted. Um, uh, Tim afterwards. So far, of course. Yeah, I did say that. Yeah, yeah fights yeah. at middleweight, which is the the <laughs> next one up. The, the weight up from where mm-hmm. um, Tim is actually fighting at. Uh, Tim, I think, blew him off and just said, "Hey, mate, I got a world title fight to fight for." Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so far, actually coming off a loss to Joe um, to Jeff Horn, so who Tim had beaten uh, a couple of months ago. Mm-hmm, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Tim's probably done with Australia. Let's put it that way. Yeah, uh, Michael, go so. go back in your box. Yeah. Um, you're not getting that to zoo fight. Um, so I don't. A, a lot of loudmouth approach to yeah, yeah. fighting at the moment, isn't it? It's oh, I I, that's, I, you got gen- where you build up a lot. Yeah, you've got to generate eyes. I, like yeah, I, I guess so. I guess so. Like we said before, Again. I think the the purest probably the box. You know. Guys, our dad's age probably aren't appreciating the this new young generation and their yeah. bloody yeah. pale ale beer. Bloody, you, you <laughs> maybe blame McGregor a little bit for this, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Ali, go yeah. back to Ali. Like that's that's it's that that approach. Yeah. McGregor's probably yeah. the first one to do it since two thousand. That really done it really well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know, to the, I think in terms of like build. cross sports or yeah. that outsider coming into the sport, yeah. mm-hmm. McGregor's definitely paved the way for, for sure. That. But and you have to think back in the day as well. If you wanted to talk shit, you did it in a press conference or, or yeah. Yeah, yeah. These days you can do it from your bedroom or it's everywhere and anywhere. Camera phones, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. To, yeah. to the point, like you know that Israel Johnny Jones fight uh, was looking like that's probably Israel's next fight because he's not going to fight Whitaker because mm. Whitaker's mm. won. He's like, well, that does nothing for me at the moment. So, John Jones, who's been bulking for heavyweight, um, going to go. Back I don't know whether, whether it's light heavyweight because Bones is never getting down to middleweight. So. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, again, the, none of the stuff all kind of coming up, but yep. Tim Chizou is going to go fight for a world title belt. That's probably the main thing. He smoked Morgan in this, looked yep. really, really good. Um, only had a, under a round worth of work, so, so not much you can talk knocked about. Knocked him but. out after 114 seconds, so less under, than two under minutes. Under two minutes there is pretty good. Yeah, obviously, you got the pedigree there, yeah, definitely. And uh, um, I think he it didn't. It wasn't a shot, but he sent it off to his old man. It's just like, did you like that one, Dad? Because <laughs> you know, uh, his old man very well known for his finishing power, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Tim not so much. But mm-hmm. uh, um, and which of course also is what you need to get into that international um, uh, appeal and bracket mm-hmm. is you want to you, you got to finish guys because that's what people draws eyeballs for sure uh so you know to get that huge finish now really looking for a world title fight you know send it out to his old man is like hey did you like that one I, I guarantee he liked that one he would have big costa fighting out of rockdale new south wales can you bring up usc 256 results yes because um, well, that also was on the weekend yeah a little bit under the radar in, in terms of a you know main event for the usc yeah. i don't want to say it yeah. was uh maybe because of the featherweights were the main Main card, no, they don't yeah. draw as well. No, and in terms of big name stars, yeah. probably a little bit lacking. Obviously, still UFC main yeah. event. We'll quickly report yeah. on it. Should draw it up for us, Monkey. Put yeah. it on the S- screen for me. So right. see it. Let's put it on the screen. Um, so start at yeah, the bottom. Interesting. Start at the bottom. So I think uh, heavyweight um, Dos Santos, like some of the actual big names you've known in the past, mm. loses yeah. gets knocked out. Mm-hmm. Um, Heavyweight that can happen. Who is this Cyril Gain? He's seven and zero now. Yeah, he right. looks pretty good. Say newcomer to the UFC. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he's had seven fights in the UFC. I think he's no seven mixed player. martial arts professional fights. Yeah. Uh, he's probably one to keep an eye on. Yeah. Junior getting a little bit older now. Definitely got yeah. a lot of tread on the tires. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he had a, was on a bit of a run um, end of last year to leading into this year. Mm. I don't I think that's kind of died off again. So I think he's former done. heavyweight champion, mind yes, you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um Kevin Holland, who's come up and coming in the middleweight division, knocks out um um Jackariah, mm-hmm. uh who's again probably on the same sort of path as Junior. Missed his window of opportunity for a middleweight title fight, unfortunate for him. Um, never really got that chance. Um now having a few losses and with Hol- Holland coming up I think Holland's probably another fight or two away from a title fight against Israel mm-hmm. or against whoever has got the belt at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the chicks, the strawweight? Yeah, so um, Mackenzie. Um, Mackenzie Dern. Dern uh, yep. wins this by decision. 
Um, she's had some issues with uh, making weight. I think she made weight in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, not a she. She's a big name because she's a bit of a looker. Let's put it out there. Um, <laughs> Trust you to pick up on that. <laughs> uh, but um, she usually wins by submissions. Didn't cause she's got a, a black belt and a BJJ. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But goes to the decision in this one. Points decision there. Yeah. Uh, um, Tony Ferguson dropping a fight to Charles Oliveira is interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming yeah. off that huge loss to Gagey where he. Got towed up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, going and actually went into that fight as favourite, I believe, against yes. Gagey. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, so two losses from two now for Tony yeah. Ferguson. After missing but out on the Khabib fight too. So I feel yeah. like that Gagey fight wasn't that long ago. Three months maybe? No. Well, Gagey fought Khabib a month or so ago and lost so that. So maybe, yeah. maybe. Was mid-year. Five, I think five, it was mid-year. six months ago. Yeah, time flies. Nah, obviously not for Tony Ferguson. Uh, Charles Oliveira uh, looks to be... A bit of a bounce back mm, for him. He's kind mm-hmm. of been floating around in that middle tier of yeah. the top 10 for he a, quite a while. Eight. He's getting on in age as well yeah, a little yeah. bit. So I think it was meant to be kind of, I don't want to say it's a tune-up fight or a rebound fight for mm-hmm. Tony, but yeah, some reports that he kind of maybe came on into this one a bit undercooked or wasn't focusing on what he needed to. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he ends up losing this one and that's another step back for him. Mm-hmm. And then um, b- before the main event, so Cyril Gain, he is ranked number seven in the heavyweight division. Yeah, yeah. Where, is where's he a, from? Is he, uh, he American, is from American or Caribbean. Uh, testing me here. He is. Oh, you never would have guessed this. Give France. me France. Oh, he's French. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, is the heavyweight division pretty light on at the top there? Well, Stipe's not doing anything and Francis Nangano not doing anything because Stipe's mm. not doing anything. Mm, mm. Um, so there's not much movement, hence why Bones possibly is going to come up and walk straight in there. Mm. Outside of that, um, Rosenstrike and uh, who else is floating around in there? I think a lot of the uh, – I think it's, you know, outside of those top two, everyone else around there's just been bouncing back and forth between yeah. wins and losses. Like no one's really had a clear run to kind of get into that conversation of yet. Rosa mm. Strike was, but then Nagano ended that. So yeah, um, yeah, it's kind of quiet in the heavyweight division, which is unfortunate. Especially you know, Steepa's kind yeah. of been holding it up. They need those guys fighting. Like you want heavyweight fights going on because it's the premiere of the UFC. Of course, yeah. everyone wants to see the big boys bang. Not so much the featherweight guys, but mm. interesting in this one, uh, these guys coming off, uh, both guys fought at UFC 255 three weeks ago. Jesus. So, to, yeah, quick oh, really? turnarounds, yeah, oh, yeah, and they fought to a draw. So a five-round, 25-minute oh. war, and they fought a draw yep. in this. So Pretty rare occurrence in the yeah. UFC, yeah. finishing in a draw. Yeah, that's it. So, obviously, this is a flyweight title bout between Jefferson Figueroa and Brendan Mon- Marano. Marano, yeah. Marino? Yeah, so right. Davison, uh, I think, will retain, of course, with a draw, but whether they run this back or not in a month's time. Like, yeah. <laughs> if these guys are in camp. Quick like, turnaround. Yeah, maybe another quick turnaround. Unbelievable. Because um, I don't think there's anything planned for UFC 257 yet. They might have one or two fights. Because mm-hmm. um, the, the, the next three fight nights, uh, the next one's booked, but the next two after that are kind of, you scroll up, monkey. Um, a little bit uh, light on at this point. Just as so you go up, so you just click it. Um, it's because Thompson's yeah fighting Jeff Neal mm-hmm. tomorrow. Jose Aldo's yeah, it. Jose Aldo fighting uh, Moralo Vieira and the bottom um, uh, as the the co-main in this. So that's some big names. Um, but otherwise, yeah, Greg Hardy, former NFL player. Yep. Keeping his run going. Ma- against Marcin Taibura. Yeah. No name. Um, so, and I don't think you, you can't you know, pick the next one because I don't think it's really officially booked yet. It's pretty light no. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if you go to Wikipedia, you can kind of see it. I think there's like one or two fights on this card. So the cards in the new year in 2021 are still a bit light on. Yep. Uh, we'll finish up with some round ball over in Europe. In uh, soccer. Yeah. yeah you- touch on the EPL. Might want to bring out this cricket over? No, it's still going. <laughs> yeah. So we've had the cricket off screen for about four minutes, so <laughs> the way this game's been going. <laughs> Seems Another like No, nah, no wickets. No, no, no yeah, there's been a wicket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> India 9 for 36. Oh, man. Six to go. Yes. This 
we could be witnessing his, history unravel here <laughs> live on the Esky. India's inning might end before this podcast ends. <laughs> it, may, it may do. It may do. Long podcast for us boys today. Yeah, very long. It's going to be our longest one. Obviously, there's been a lot yeah, been going playing on, the cricket for on live. Uh, I don't mind it being <laughs> going so long. Uh, Cummins is bowling to Mohammed Shami. Oh, oh. oh, she's nearly picked him up there. All right, let's try and get through uh, a little bit of soccer news. I, I want to talk about uh, Arsenal first losing to Burnley. Um, yeah. That was – when was that? That was last – Yeah, so, so since since our last podcast, they've had a loss and then they drew with Southampton. But the that Gunners are Burnley. Coming, <laughs> Gunners, Gunners are coming 15th. Yeah, they're so bad at like the Like, really bad, yeah. Um, still early in the season, but no one comes back from there and – plays European football or wins titles. Well, they lost to Burnley and then they drew with Southampton. Southampton, yeah. Southampton yep. are playing good this yeah. year. Oh, wow. Uh, so Cummins has just hit Shami in the head. He's gone to sort of hook him and then pull out at the last second. Um, some other big teams been losing slash underperforming. Chelsea lost to Wolves and Man City drew with West Brom. Um, so I think Chelsea's in sixth and City at ninth. Chelsea's uh, uh, down, yeah. down in seventh. Seventh, seventh, seventh and ninth. Seventh and ninth. Yep. Yeah. So you know, two massive clubs, two financially uh, very successful clubs, uh, over a, th- a third of the way through the season now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're probably going to struggle to be playing European football. Um, Leeds put five on Newcastle. They're looking pretty good coming up. Yeah, they're um, pretty good so far. Everton got over Leicester 2-0. Two, two they're both having a good season. I think Leicester's fourth and Everton's fifth, something like that. Yep. And yep. United got a last-minute uh, lucky win against – no, actually, that wasn't last minute. That was early on. They win against Sheffield 3-2. They go to sixth, so they've been clawing their way back up after a pretty ordinary start. And the game of the round, one versus two – uh, Liverpool win 2-1 after a last-minute winner from Robert, Roberto Firmino. The Reds had 76% possession uh, against the second-best team. Uh, they had like 11 shots on target. On target, well, 18 so. total, something like it's, that. So Hugo Lloris kept uh, the Spurs in, in <laughs> yeah. the game. Uh, it's probably going to be Liverpool's again to lose this year. Uh, although it is early stages, uh, they're looking mm. like a really good team uh, following their... Uh, first championship last year, league title, I should say, in a very long time. And uh, the Champions League playoff berths, uh, the draw was announced. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach get City. Good job. Thank you. There's a <laughs> mouthful. Lazio get Bayern Munich, Atletico and Chelsea. That's a really nice match up there. Lipsick mm. and Liverpool. Uh, that could be a little bit of a danger one for Liverpool. Lipsick a little bit sneaky good. Porto, Juventus, you'd expect Juventus to get up there. Yep. Probably the best matchup, Barca and PSG. Yeah, that'd be a good game. Yeah, it's a Sevilla get Dortmund and Atalanta have got their work cut out against Real Madrid. Big time. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Champions League f- uh, playoffs to get underway coming yeah. up. Is that When does that kick off? Oh, I, uh, you got the Google there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, not this weekend. No, it's uh, pr- no. probably New Year. I yeah. think it's like mid January. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Off, off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, three English teams still there. Mm-hmm. Uh, three Spanish teams. Uh, no, four Spanish teams. Mm-hmm. Um, three German teams. Yeah, so yeah. be interesting to see what happens there. Yeah, we'll definitely follow that along. Mm. And I think C- City should be able to get over Munchen Gladbach, and Liverpool should be able to get over Leipzig. Chelsea really have their work cut out uh, against Atletico, but you'd probably mm. expect two English teams in that uh, quarterfinal stage. Mm. Yep. That just about wraps us up. Uh, we could stay here and just watch <laughs> the cricket, really, and go live to air. Yeah. Uh, India, so, nine for 36. So we'll report on how this test yeah. match finishes. Uh, unbelievable to see it all unfold in front of us here in what the space of an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So Sharma, wow. is he... Shammy. Shammy, sorry. Mm-hmm. Is he right-hand bowler? Yes. Well, he's just copped one on the right arm. Yep. And right yep. on like his middle of his wrist. I hope he hasn't broken it. But no. So he's not real comfortable. No, they've gone out and wrapped, further off wrapped it up. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of like forearm, mid, yeah. mid forearm. That's um, that going to be a huge loss if they then he can't bowl. If he can't bowl. Yeah, yeah. he's having a chat now with a physio slash doctor and what... Had a bit of bit of a break in play. 
Is he going to retire? I wonder if he's going to retire hurt yeah. for them to imagine that. Oh, it's all, hap- all happening. He's in he's, all sorts. He's yeah. working that forearm. Mm. Yeah. Well, while they have a quick look at him, uh, we will wrap up because that is us for the podcast. We did cover all the cricket that led into this week. Then we had a little bit of NRL and AFL news, uh, the rugby draw. Uh, Then we were rudely interrupted throughout the NFL chat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Then a little bit of NBA news, uh, the last race in the F1. Uh, We talked a bit about what's happening in the boxing world and, of course, the UFC and then finished up with the round ball and soccer as – the cricket possibly India innings wraps up because he doesn't look too great. He doesn't I wonder, look yeah, too I wonder if he's broken a bone there. Up. Yeah, he's he's in a lot of pain. Yeah. Uh, thank you, hit. thank you if you're still here yeah. after nearly three hours. Yeah. Our longest crack <laughs> so far on the Esky. Obviously, crazy time of year uh, yeah. with with sport uh, here and overseas. Uh, we we'll hope to see you next time yep. on the Esky. The yep. NBA will have kicked off and we'll have a result here from the first test plus all the usual goodness uh, and week 15 of the NFL. Yep. Thank you, That's boys. It. Thank you for coming out. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Again Absolute marathon. And it looks like Shami is retiring her. Wow. So India, wow. <laughs> India will finish with the lowest test total ever, 36. Six. Unbelievable. <laughs> and that is on the Esky. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye.